pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, <laughs> indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Don't laugh at me. Don't do it. Don't do it. All right, if we could have the roll call, please, Executive Director. Dan Pastato. Present. Hey, Lewis. Here. D. Mello. Present. D. Reyes. Present. D. Sanford. Present. Erica Seitzman. Present. Paul Vega. Here. <laughs> All right, announcement regarding notice. I would like to advise those present that notice of this regular meeting of the Housing Authority of the City of Hoboken has been provided to the public in accordance with provisions of the Open Public Meeting Act. Notice of this regular Board of Commissioners meeting of Thursday, May 13th, 2021 was given by publication of the regular monthly board meeting notice of the authority with amendments as necessary and was sent to the Jersey Journal and Star Ledger as a public notice on Tuesday, May 4th, 2021 as notification to the general public of the meeting and sent to the city clerk of Hoboken on Tuesday, May 4th, 2021, with a copy of the agenda to be posted on the bulletin board in City Hall, the Hoboken Public Library and the Hoboken Police Department headquarters. I direct the minutes of this meeting to state that I have announced that adequate notice of this meeting has been given as required by the Open Public Meetings Act. In addition, I direct that the minutes of this meeting to state the following. As a result of the restrictions established by Executive Order 107, issued by the Governor of New Jersey with respect to the need to limit public gatherings to mitigate the spread of COVID-19, the meeting will be conducted exclusively through the use of communications equipment. This procedure is in accordance with NJSA 10-4-9.3, which states that a public body shall not be deemed to have violated any provision of the Open Public Meetings Act in conducting a meeting by means of communication or other electronic equipment. In addition, this procedure complies with Article 3, Section 7 of the Authority Bylaws, which allows for participation in authority meetings by members of the Board of Commissioners by means of telephone, conference, or similar communications equipment. Now, this time, I believe we need our traditional addenda. Thank you, Mr. Chair. In keeping with the Housing Authority's standard practice of affording members of the public the opportunity to comment at monthly board meetings, the authority will be accepting comment during this meeting in one of three ways. First, comments can be sent by email to hha at myhhanj.com from now until 7.30 p.m. All timely and legally appropriate comments received by email will be read aloud by an authority representative for all attendees of the meeting to hear. Second, beginning at approximately 7.30 p.m., the authority will allow access to participants one at a time to comment using their telephone or through Zoom's audio function. Third, if you are participating in the meeting using Zoom from a web browser or smart device, you can submit comment using the Zoom Q&A function, which can be accessed by clicking the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. We require that any member of the public who wishes to submit comment using the Q&A function, please limit themselves to a single submission rather than submitting multiple brief comments. In the event that a member of the public submits more than one comment, only the first legally appropriate comment will be read aloud at the meeting. Any comment submitted after 7.30 p.m. will be rejected and will not be read aloud at the meeting. In addition, please note that while the Zoom video of this meeting is being streamed through Facebook Live, public comment will not be accepted through Facebook or Facebook Live. Any member of the public watching through Facebook Live who wishes to comment may do so by email, by telephone, or by using the Zoom Q&A function. The email address, again, is hha at myhhanj.com, and the telephone number is 646-558-8656, and the webinar ID is 485-881-849. Finally, please be advised that the standard practice of the executive director and members of the board is to refrain from engaging in a back and forth discussion during the public comment portion of authority meetings. However, in light of the ongoing crisis, the authority realizes that limited exceptions to that practice may be necessary. On behalf of the authority, I thank you in advance for your patience and understanding. 
At this time, in order to allow more time for members of the public to submit comment in advance of 730, I recommend that the board consider adopting a resolution to reorder the agenda to allow the executive director to deliver his report. All right, thank you. All right, so if we move on to the, as per the suspended agenda, oh, no, actually, we actually have to take the vote on the suspended agenda, correct? Uh, see. All okay. right. Um, I'll make a motion to suspend the agenda in accordance with the uh, description that Mr. Fitzpatrick just gave. Do I have a second? Second. second. Okay. Um, could we have a vote, please, Executive Director? Mayor Pistato. Yes. Lewis. Yes. Mello. Yes. B. Reyes. Yes. B. Sanford. Yes. Placement. Yes. Al Vega. Yes. Thank you. Um, so I'll, can, I'll start out with my report. Um, there you'll see a few uh, folks that you're not used to seeing uh, as panelists. I'll be introducing them in a moment or two. Um, on the board subcommittees, uh, the Facilities and Capital Improvement Committee met um, uh, our CDBG application, which I put in a copy of, to your packet, um, and our, our current projects were reviewed. We met on May the 4th. Um, the litigation committee met on May 11th, and uh, you will see something coming to a closed session tonight. Uh, resident services policy uh, committee met on 510. You do have a resolution before you tonight and some information that I'll have for you later in my presentation. Uh, the admissions and continued occupancy policy committee did not meet this month. We should be meeting this coming month and the professional procurement committee did not meet. Uh, my report is Fox Hill Gardens. Uh, we do remain excited about our progress in that transition to RAD. Uh, couldn't be happier about it. We are continuing the detailed work of transitioning our, um, our, our, our bank accounts and the banking information and the resident information uh, um, over to a RAD base rather than a public housing base. Uh, we have been working with our A&E firm to finalize their proposal uh, to scope out the renovation work. Um, that work is budgeted uh, through the RAD loan, and uh, we should have them working very soon uh, with a scope of work to get that work going over at Fox Hill. Our planning initiative, um, as we said before, we owe that Spartan deliberative process to our residents and to all of Hoboken. And we've been working hard at developing a process with Tori Gallus and partners to, uh, to provide that process. Um, I'm excited to say that we've begun our planning initiative and um, we've got a couple major components in place. Since our original organizational meeting with the planning group and HHA on April 7th, uh, just a little over a month ago, we've been working with the planners to gather information to move the project forward uh, the planners did come for a site visit uh, in April. It went very, very well. And tonight I have invited members of the Torty Gallus and Partners team uh, to perform a review with us of where we stand uh, just a month into the process and what we can expect over the coming months. Um, I'd like to introduce to you uh, Troy McGee and Susan Gruel uh, that are with us tonight. Uh, and I'm gonna hand it over to Troy uh, to kind of bring us up to date on, on what Forty Gallus and Partners has been doing with staff and where we think we're going to be over the next couple of months. Troy, welcome. Yes, welcome. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for having us. Um, as uh, Mr. Recco had pointed out um, on um, uh, April 7th, uh, we did our kickoff meeting and uh, followed up by um, because we're, we're doing weekly meetings, uh, we were also uh, able to, um, uh, in the middle to uh, late April, uh, also get up uh, to uh, Hoboken to uh, do a site uh, visit to tour the buildings, uh, as well as the site, um, to be able to photograph it and just uh, really just start to gather data, because th that's where we really are at this point is we're really doing our data gathering uh, to be able to um, do a series of analysis um, and, and as well as 
we are gearing up uh, within the next 30 days uh, to be um, to uh, start having our stakeholder meetings. And so that, that's something that uh, should be happening fairly soon, uh, as well as um, continuing to do our uh, review of the program, which will be informed by the uh, market analysis, which uh, was kicked off this week as well. So just to go back, because I know I just threw a lot uh, out there and just to kind of like a jumble format. So uh, kickoff meeting and site visits in April, uh, continuing to gather uh, data uh, in April up to this point. Market analysis uh, was, was kicked off this week. And then we have uh, the uh, preparing for the stakeholder meetings and then also uh, doing a, a uh, program review after we get feedback uh, and, and gather data from the stakeholder meetings, that's going to help us to do a program review. Um, so th that is something that we will continue to do. Uh, uh, we're going to try to continue to do that for the rest of the month of May uh, to the middle of June is, is what we're thinking. And then from there, um, once we have uh, our initial uh, data uh, gathering uh, process completed, and th that is just our initial one, more will occur as we continue through this process, but it'll help um, give us an idea as we uh, move forward through this process, along with we understand that there are uh, principles that you all are creating, because that is also going to be uh, critical in helping to framework our goals. So uh, that, that is another uh, important component that I, I don't want to miss uh, mentioning as well. Um, so uh, with that data and going through the land use analysis, um, looking to um, complete the analysis um, in June, uh, June, July, uh, within that time frame, and then this is where uh, getting into mid uh, mid July or so, be able to um, start to do the uh, community meetings for the design charrette, and um, you know after we uh, have that. A uh, series of, of design meetings and, and the charrette, uh, which will carry us, uh, I believe, into uh, sometime in the middle to a little bit late in August, um, with the designs that we've vetted and worked worked out with the community and the stakeholders, uh, because this is going to be a transparent process um, that. Once we have that and we all come to a consensus on a design is to be able to come up with some preliminary construction cost estimates. And after we have that series of information, uh, be able to, then we will come back to the community uh, with that information, uh, get further input uh, from that to, to really uh, fine tune uh, the vision that we've all created together, and then uh, we will finalize the document from there. So uh, we are talking about a, a process that is uh, likely to uh, take us into the fall, uh, you know, sometime in October, but this is a process that we're looking forward to engaging with you all, and uh, just can't wait to uh, continue and uh, you know, meet with you all face to face as uh, things start to open back up. That's tremendous, Troy. Um, that's a that's kind of a good snapshot of where we've been. Uh, Susan, do you want to add anything since you're here before I get to talking? Uh, no, I think Troy did a great job in summarizing, and it was extremely helpful to be out and about. Um, to see the um, housing authority projects and particularly their relationship to the neighborhood or lack thereof. Um, and they were, it was, that was an excellent productive um, piece. There's a lot of documentation that you have in the city. Um, you have a lot of plans, you're 
2018 reexamination report, land use plan, your Stevens uh, study and plan, your rebuild by design with all the flooding. There's a lot of information there with a lot of good, um, with again, a lot of information, but a lot of good um, thoughts. So we're trying to gather that and summarize that to be able to move forward. Again, as Troy said, um, we anticipate a very transparent and very robust um, public outreach process with as many stakeholder groups as possible. Um, and including obviously the housing authority, city representatives, um, the residents and other stakeholder groups. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Chair, uh, Chairman Mello, I have a question. Yes, Commissioner Impostato. Um, welcome guys. It's uh, nice to see your faces. This is the first time uh, Nice to have you. A um, couple questions for you. First, uh, when you guys were on site, who, who was present for that? Um, are, are you referring to um, our team or? Oh, just, uh, yeah, just in general, everybody, any, anybody that was there. I'm just curious. Okay, okay so you had uh, from the Torty Gallus team, it was myself and David Stimble. Um, who uh, I, I believe you all have met. Uh, and then from Higher Gruel, it was uh, Susan and John Barry. Um, and then also Jaime borden from uh, TCG. And- um, So who, who's, who's uh, who, sorry if I interrupt, uh, who's Higher Gruel? That's me. That's me. Yay, oh. I'm here. <laughs> so you're, you're, you're hired by Tori Gallus? We are a team and we are a separate um, community planning consulting firm that have partnered with Torty Gallus. Yes, they are the co-leaders of this process. For a second, if I can interrupt. Um, this contract is a joint contract with three groups who proposed under the aegis of the RFP that was directed primarily for a licensed planner. So Higher Gruel is a New Jersey licensed planner. In addition to that, Torty Gallus provides expertise with respect to the types of things we need to deal with HUD. Great expertise on financial matters and planning. And the new community groups also provides financial planning. That's Jaime. When we refer to the three together, unfortunately, we've gotten a little tripped up with the idea that the title of one of the entities is Torty Gallus and Partners. But that's not really who we're talking to. We're talking to three partners who are the planning partners. And that's why I've tried from time to time to emphasize that. Torty Gallus doesn't hire the other people. We hired the three groups together. I don't know whether that explains it to you more. And the professional service here technically is the licensed planner hire rule. And Mr. Fitzpatrick, was it most or was it all of the parties that bid weren't were they all or was it most of them that were you know, multiple faceted teams like this team was all but one all but one. All six were planner firms five of them had other partners so when we when we write a check for our planner who does it go to Oh. Emily, you on? The way I drew the contract, Andrew, was to reflect the three groups 
and provide that the billing would go through Tordy Gallus. I believe that's what's being done, but only Emil could answer that. Have you folks built anything yet? I um, guess that's a question for Mr. McGee. Uh, I believe we were preparing one, but I know that there's a certain time frame that we need to get the invoices in. So I, I, I would have to say. Was that going to come from Tordy Gattles on behalf of the three? Uh, yes, sir. I don't know whether that answers your question or not, Andrew. That was my understanding of what they were going to do. All right. So we've got we've got three different organizations working together under under one umbrella that's called our planner, right? That is correct. Um so at that meeting, the first kickoff meeting, all three entities were there. Who who from the housing authority was there? It was myself and a couple of members of my staff. Were, were any commissioners uh, available for that? Um, I can't remember. Aaron, did you uh, did you join us for that one, Aaron? You're muted. I, I, yeah, I think so. I'm having a bad connection time. I'm trying to move around for a better connection. Uh, I think I was at the first uh, shared meeting. Okay, so I, the, the, you see where I'm going? Like I'm, I'm right off the bat here. We're not being transparent. I didn't, I didn't know about the first kickoff meeting. Why was Aaron there and and no one else was invited? Well, I think mostly the the kickoff meetings have been staff. I mean, we're having staff meetings regularly with the planners. So um, why was why was Aaron there? And that's not a meeting that everyone would come to all the time and and why was why was Aaron there and no one else was invited and if you don't mind I was getting to that may I finish now may I just okay um so I think during the course of that Aaron stopped in and we had a conversation and they said they were coming and Aaron said why don't I come along I said fine I think to have the board invited to every one of these meetings we would have to pick and choose on who comes every time. I think Aaron was around, so he came along for the walk with us. I think Aaron has also been very interested because he was part of the enterprise and knows this type of development well. So he wanted to give his expertise on the on the construction side to it. Um, but I, I think that, that was it. It was kind of an ad hoc thing and he was around. But these are mainly for staff to bring um, the planners in and work with the planners uh, to make sure they're getting the information they need. And Commissioner, I, I've, I've strongly considered um, establishing this year a, a committee uh, that will basically essentially be a rehabilitation slash redevelopment committee. So mm -hmm. I'm going to continue to give that some thought and uh, talk to our attorneys about that. Got it. Yeah, my, my only my my uh, my thought process here is obviously this is a very big project. We want to be as transparent as possible. I think we can all agree on that. 100%. We've seen in the first couple steps already, wh whether it was our, uh, I don't even know what to call that meeting that we had as a board, um, as well as this kickoff meeting, uh, as well as this is the first time I'm seeing these these lovely faces, um, uh, as, as well as I didn't know three entities were involved. I didn't know what three entities were involved. So you see where I'm going here. So We've got to get organized and be as transparent as or and organized as possible through this entire thing, or it's all going to go downhill very, very quickly. 100%. I think we can all agree on that. One hundred. Because the, the public, if the public, if we as commissioners are not organized and know everything, not one person at a meeting. I didn't get a report on what that what happened at that meeting. I I don't think any other commissioner got so. So now Aaron has all this knowledge that I don't have, and I don't think that's fair. So it, it would have been a good opportunity to maybe have Aaron submit a report and, and tell us all what, what he learned at it or what was discussed. That would have been nice. Um, we need to get on a better stage and have some organization with that. That's my first comment. My second comment, um, 
as for the principles that were discussed where on the timeline, where do we stand with the, with the principles that we were supposed to come up with and get approved by the board? They will be before, before that question's answered, I do, I do want to point out that, that that is enterprise, which is a different um, entity than who is presenting to you today, who is the planners that we've contracted with and we're paying for. So I just want you to understand, Commissioner, that enterprise has been provided to us uh, by the HUD field office. And they have worked in the past. It's not unfamiliar with them to work with um, the, the parties that we, we've contracted with and we're paying out of our budget. Um, but that was Enterprise who held that meeting that you referred to earlier. Now, so when, when, when Troy just talked about the principles, is that totally different? No, he referred to the same thing as you were talking about because uh, we, we all have been reviewing them. They're gonna come back to the board. The board established them. We're taking a look at them and it's gonna come back to the board in June. The, uh, for the principles? Yes. Is that gonna be a public process? Well, of course, it'll be at the board meeting. Um, and uh, it can come to a subcommittee as well, but it's going to be a public process at the board meeting. Yeah. Next, next so the, the, That's the only so way the, legally, uh, Commissioner, that's the only way we can legally all uh, be given access to an issue. And that, that's, that's, um, that's a, the way we are in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act is to do those things in an open public meeting. Otherwise, we're in violation. Understood. The, the, the meeting we had with Enterprise where we discussed several, um, you know, principles, I thought, or foundational elements of this entire process, Enterprise was going to type up a one-page document summarizing what our goals and principles and value system were. They did that. They submitted it to all of us. We all, we all saw that, I'm assuming. I saw it. When is that document going to be approved by our board and made public because I'm pretty sure that has not been in June. That's what we were just talking about. Okay. So that, okay. So that's June. Got it. Understood. When Troy, when you talk about stakeholders, is that you're, you're talking about in addition to our residents? Yes, sir. And, and stakeholders are just, you're, you're talking about council members, community members, um, right. Board yes. of Education, community groups, uh, the more the better. Yes. I, I, I personally want this to be as transparent as possible, Commissioner, and as with the light of day upon it as possible as it's being created, not, not after it's a finished product. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I, 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 think that is the, I think that's the primary reason why planning efforts in the past failed. I agree, but you can understand where I'm coming from when when things happen and and one or two members are part of it and, and we're not all part of it, right? That's not being transparent. Yeah, but I mean, but like I said, I've, I've been strong consider to establish. Can I say something after? Sure. So I think Andrew's, uh, Commissioner Impresano might be confused because we actually had to vote on this contract. And in the contract, all of the, it was in there. So it was a few, it was about maybe three or four months ago. And I believe they may, I believe Troy came on and spoke and explained the process, but it was probably about four or five, three or four months ago. And, you know, time has passed and the housing for Hoboken committee has met. So maybe you're confused, but it, we have been transparent from the beginning. It, it was board, it was voted on, you voted on it. So I think there was a little slight confusion in regarding to our planning partners. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not confused by that. I, I'm conf what I'm confused is what I just said before. I, I did not know that they were coming to town, and I'm confused why Aaron was there and not and not all of us. If all of us can't be there, then I don't think one commissioner should be there. And if it's going to be a committee, then that makes sense. Three people, a three-person committee, should be invited, and then they go. Having somebody there that's one person. That is what I'm confused about. Very, very clear difference. Um, I'm not confused about the process. I am. I was confused at all three of these entities. I did not know that. I, I think. Did not I, know think who. I think, Commissioner. I think that's what Commissioner Seitzman was um, referring to because you had said that you didn't realize there was three committees, and I think she was pointing out the fact that in the uh, 
in the packet what we're voting on it was it was in there but uh yeah okay. I, I so, know, so that's yeah. my that, yeah that's my point i would love to i would love to be uh you know be present at the next time uh these professionals are on site would love to be there to ask some questions get some insight so i can be more informative and uh and answer any questions that residents give me thank you thank you i just have one question sure commissioner um the yeah. enterprise group I know HUD is paying for it, but who picked them? Like, did we pick them or did HUD pick them? I believe HUD did, correct? Correct. HUD did. The HUD field office. So, so the HUD field, the the HUD field office contacted Enterprise and yeah. said, "You're going to be working with HUD. You're going to be working with the Hoboken Housing Authority." One hundred percent. And uh, I actually, I spoke to um, the HUD field office uh, two, two weeks ago, and they, they emphasized how, um, how much they communicate with enterprise and um, uh, they, they've gotten feedback and insight from enterprise, uh, you know, in general, their dealings with us, their, their dealings with the board, their dealings with the meeting they had, and um, they, they have a very close relationship with enterprise. And I do hope we understand. And they also they also pointed out that they um, uh, I I was sp speaking to uh, Ms. Arce, and she also pointed out that they um, enterprise and the field office and uh, city hall are are in ever increasing contact with each other regarding all these issues. As they should be. Yeah, I agree. And uh, I, again, I, I understand th this is the very beginning and, and there have been on, uh, you know, some staff meetings, some staff work we've had to do with the planners. And, and I think as you see us roll out the um, stakeholder meetings, uh, set up our separate website for this project. Um, I think as we uh, get our new committees in place for the coming year, I think you're gonna see um, a big difference in how this rolls out. We've done quite a bit of talking about transparency and how to keep it transparent. I hope you can understand this has been the very first steps, um, just about a month into it. Um, so um, you're gonna see a lot of changes over the next couple of months as we go through um, this process. I also wanna note that if anyone has, we, we have spent quite a bit of time identifying stakeholders and, and how we're gonna come out to them. Um, you might, if anyone's got particular stakeholders they would like to see specifically invited. We, I would say we probably already have them, but feel free to email me and we'll make sure they get on the stakeholder lists. Oh, one, one, more, one more question. Uh, I was just checking my notes. Uh, Susan, you, you mentioned that there's various re, uh, reports uh, that you guys are conducting, that you're using for this process. Uh, Stevens, you mentioned uh, Rebuild by Design. Are you using the Vision 2020 award-winning plans uh, from way back when, when they won state awards? We're looking at that. We're, we're okay, looking so at you, any documents, you're... any documents that have been prepared with respect to the housing authority, as well as documents that have been adopted either by the planning board or city council um, that provide insight. Great. Now, I just was curious if you were in possession of those reports and, you know, from the architect as, as well as just the, the overall plan, because I'm sure there's, you. there's gotta yes. be, you know, it won, it won a ton of awards. So I, I wonder if there's gotta be something in there that you can, you can grab and take. Yeah. And, and commissioner, just to give you some insight that, um, even this group of, uh, this team here might not realize, um, when we were going through the housing for Hoboken interview process, and it was the, it was the three members of the procurement committee, and it was also um, and three members of the housing for Hoboken board from this board and um, uh, Councilwoman um, Falco and Mr. Villamar. Um, you know, Commissioner Lewitt actually made a, made a point with everybody we interviewed to to point out the existence of Vision 2020 and to say that um, we weren't interested in hiring somebody that was going to replicate and reinvent the wheel, uh, but that they were instead going to uh, refer to that document, <laughs> use that document, and not not redo what's already been done. Yeah, great. Appreciate that, Aaron. 
All right. Any other questions? Or were, were you folks done at this point? And I think Jaime uh, joined us uh, while we were all talking. Welcome, Jaime. I'm glad you're here with us. Uh, Jaime is the other leg of this, which, uh, which we really appreciate. Jaime is a financial expert. Guru. Uh, guru. <laughs> My, my father defined an expert as a damn fool 50 miles from home. So <laughs> I guess when I'm working in Hoboken, I qualify. <laughs> so, so welcome. I think Jaime's got a wealth of experience. We're glad to have him aboard as part of the team. And uh, he's going to be guiding us through the financial side of these projects as this matures. Yeah, and before before you speak, I do I do want to note that although every member of this team was pretty excellent and and they were overwhelmingly supported compared to the other thoroughly good teams, but they were really standout. Uh, I would say of all the standouts, Jaime was probably the greatest standout, and we were highly impressed with his expertise. So, that being said, the floor is Thank yours. You. I hope I can live up to your expectations. <laughs> I hope so too. Right. Anything else on uh, on the planners? If not, uh, I would like to thank uh, Troy and Susan um, uh, and Jaime for being with us this evening. Uh, this we're glad to invite you to this meeting to uh, explain what we've been doing and make sure that everyone's up on what we've been doing. And uh, this, I'm sure, will be the first of many over the next few months. So great to work with you, and we'll look forward to pushing this thing forward. I think we're going to see a lot of changes over the next few months. We're ready. Thank you. Likewise. Everyone Thank you. have a good evening. One of the best yeah. teams in the country. Exciting times for our housing authority. So thank you. Yep. Have, have a productive meeting. Yes. Thank you. Uh, moving on with my report uh, um, over to the, uh, uh, the technical assistance group for the enterprise community, which we've kind of talked about already. Um, they're uh, completing their summary of input received at the special board meeting, and uh, they'll be reviewing along with us and bringing it to the June board meeting for full review. And uh, Enterprise is also working consistently with our staff to re review our policies, procedures, staffing organization, as we look forward to this transformation of the Hoboken Housing Authority properties. Uh, again, they are a team that uh, just is incredibly talented, um, has experience with housing authorities across the country that have done transformations and we're fully in involved and engaged with them right now. The Resident Advisory Board uh, had an excellent meeting on May 11th. Uh, we discussed the need for individual meetings. Um, since the pandemic, we have been, haven't been having my quarterly executive director meet and greets, and we have really missed that on each site specifically. Although the grab board has continued to meet, we haven't had our individual meetings on a quarterly basis. And I think it's time we got back together on some level to do that, um, even through the pandemic issues. So we agreed through the board to, uh, to uh, 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 schedule uh, individual AMP meetings over the next month, where we're gonna be meeting with management and maintenance and the resident leaders at each site individually to sit down and talk about each site, where we are and what's going on. Again, the pandemic really put a, put a crush on that. Um, <clears throat> topics will focus on the improvement of services to residents uh, by both management and maintenance and uh, talk quite a bit about COVID-19 issues and how hopefully over the next month, we'll be rolling some things back and be able to participate a little more. Um, policing security issues, those were talked quite a bit at the Resident Advisory Board. I have been working with the city and identifying funds for security guards at Adams, Monroe, and Fox Hill. Um, the city administration is now taking a look at where and how they might be able to help us uh, with those. Uh, to initiate as soon as possible some security coverage at those sites. Uh, COVID-19 issues, uh, the pandemic is still with us. Um, we are still officially closed um, at, the, uh, at the community rooms. We'll be closely following the CDC state and city of Hoboken OEM as we look to hopefully ease those restrictions in the future. Um, uh, 
our thanks goes to specifically Hopes this month. Uh, our, our residents had their first bingo games um, at our elderly disabled sites this past week or so. Thank you, Commissioner Reyes and everyone in, involved in that. Um, it was a real joyful event, uh, some joyful events to see some folks outside playing bingo for the first time. I think we counted 15 months since the last bingo game. Uh, so you can imagine how great that was. Um, it was a good day. Uh, we continue to host a series of COVID testing events at Monroe Gardens in cooperation with the city and the state. And we had our first vaccine clinic over at Monroe Gardens on Friday. Um, it went incredibly well. Um, our, next, our vaccine clinic is going on right now. Over our second one is going on right now at Monroe. Um, we had last time over 80, almost 90 new people that were vaccinated. Uh, what I hear back from the vaccination folks is they're used to 25 to 30 on an event like that. And we had nearly 90 come through the door. So it was very, very successful and gives us great, great hope for, for being healthy in the future. Uh, also at the resident advisory board, for example, uh, a lot of the folks are going out and being leaders in their community and encouraging folks to come in and get vaccinated. Um, I'd like to give a special thank you to all the volunteers that have been passing out flyers on this initiative. Um, we've been really concerned about getting the word out and it's not only been getting the word out through social media and our, our website and, and posting in the lobbies, but we've had some great volunteers, including our board members, um, Hoboken city council members, other volunteers that have just worked tirelessly to get the word out, go door to door, pass out flyers, knock on doors, encourage people to come and get vaccinated. So we really appreciate all those efforts. And um, I think Erica was a big part of that, so thank you. Um, we continue to have some staff out on COVID related issues, and we continue to be very conservative, very thoughtful in how we approach those COVID-19 issues, making sure we do contact tracing when somebody is, um, is, is, is diagnosed as positive uh, but we hope, we certainly hope that starts to drop off in the very near future as our folks get vaccinated and we get back to a more normal working relationship. Late fees continue to be waived during the pandemic and I do attach a COVID-19 budget um, as my second attachment to the report tonight. Um, Housing for Hoboken met on May 4th. Uh, uh, we did talk to them about the development principles and asked for their input over, over the next month. Um, and the overall planning process was reviewed with that group. Um, vacancy issues, uh, we do attach a summary of those vacancy issues as attachment three. We focused on transfers over the past month. I believe we got eight families uh, that were of some emergency status transferred into um, good solid units and uh, I think uh, we're on our way with our um, work on our 42 vacant units that has started uh, with completion expected in July. Our local 55 force account operation is out there turning units also. We do intend to open up the public housing waiting list for efficiency in one bedroom apartments within the next 60 days. We expect that to be open sometime in July. We will be coming to you at our next meeting uh, with our opening uh, of the waiting list plan for you. Uh, one of the things we're, we're waiting for is to have our new software uh, contract um, finalized. I think we've been over every hurdle um, on that contract and we have a good solid contract that we expect to be effective as of July 1st. Um, because we need that software in order to do um, the um, uh, waiting list outreach um, and have the data come in from folks that put in their applications and do a lottery process. So um, that's coming very soon. And we should have the plan to you in June because we wanna open that waiting list up in July. Can I jump in and ask a question? Ken. Chairman. Yes, Commissioner, floor is yours. Thanks. Um, what is the amount of vacant units currently right now in the Hoboken Housing Authority? 
114. And is that included the 42 that are not in? Uh, yeah, correct. Uh, yes. Stand? What's that? Yeah, that, inclu that includes the 42 is in that number. Okay. So um, of the vacant units that are able to be transferred over and, and taken occupancy, what is the plan to, to get the, how many of those are, are uh, one bedroom? Most of those are studios right now. Uh, we have about seven one bedrooms that are about to be completed. So we should have, like uh, Mark was saying, we have uh, extra local 55 crews working at Fox Hill. And um, so I have still a couple in uh, Monroe and a couple at one at Adams. And the 42 that are coming, that's the one that's really going to help us because those are the ones with the bigger size bedrooms, the threes, the twos, and a few fours in there. Um, and that's, those are the ones that are going to alleviate some of the, um, the families that are asking for the bigger transfers. In the meantime, a way that we were able to find how to help some of those people, but that's how some of those transfers came about, was by taking some of the, if there was a household that may have had someone that's disabled in there that were asking for a bigger, they were uh, underhoused, um, but for one person. So we were able to take that one senior and put them in a, in a senior building. And then the family can now stay in that and they don't re require now to be moved to a bigger unit. Because the problem is the majority of the people that are waiting for transfers are in units, are asking for units that are much bigger that, that we don't, we physically don't have. So what we do have is many zeros, um, which are the studios and some ones that are, that's why uh, the waiting list opening is going to be so crucial for that. Uh, most people mm -hmm. that are on with us right now, obviously, they're looking for bigger apartments to move up. Um, but we did identify some people who were also uh, overhoused. And those are some of the people that if they were in a three bedroom, we've asked them to, to move to the senior building if they met the criteria. And then that allows us to then take that three bedroom and start working on that with local 55. But the real big, right, so, uh, go ahead. Yeah, so, so of the 70, let's just say 72 units that are, that are vacant and ready to go to move in, right? So the 114 minus 42, right? Yes. 72 units. Of those 72 units, what's the plan to get people into those as soon as possible? So the, the plan is we are going to open up the waiting list. And as soon as the waiting list opens up, those apartments are ready. We'll be able to hand keys as soon as the lottery goes. So there'll be an immediate lease up as soon as the waiting okay. list opens up. Awesome. And, we do feel, awesome. and we do feel that there's going to be a robust um, response to that waiting list. But we do have so, so residents that are residents that are listening right now. Hold there's on, there's going to be seventy-two. Uh, Commissioner, I just want. Uh, it sounded like the executive director wanted to add something to it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Still have some work to be done in them. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, so if they're not seventy-two. Aren't sitting there ready to be done. We've got the local right. five crew working. We will have a substantial number of them ready as soon as we open up that waiting list and we do that lottery. We will have a substantial number. But at this point, I can't say all 72. I'd want to check that. Um, okay. No, so right now, the, the units that are available right now are 27. And they're all mostly studios, a couple of ones. Um, that's what's available and ready at this very moment. And they're in the senior yeah. building. So people must be senior and disabled to be able to. Because we do have some people that would qualify for one, but they don't meet that criteria of the senior and disabled of the units that are ready. From the elevator uh, relocation. How many units were kept available for that relocation? Um, going back, I'd have to look at the beginning of our relocation, what, almost a year ago. Um, I'm just going to have to take a look back, Commissioner. I, I wasn't prepared to have that. Yeah, so this is, if you, this is, this is what I, I would like to see, a report on how many units were, were uh, taken for the relocation how many were actually used, all right, uh, what that number is, that number should be, you know, it should be greater than 27. If, if I mean, I, I would just sim simple math here. So we should have plenty of available units ready to go that are, that are like tomorrow can be transferred over. Um, and, and is the elevator project fully complete? So we're done with that, right? 
Almost. It seems like uh, Monday or Tuesday the final inspections are coming. But we're not. We're not, Mark. We're not at this point holding any more units for the relocation of the elevators. Is that right? No, we're Correct. not. We are going to have to be moving people back after the elevators are complete. And uh, I would conservatively say two weeks. They they may do inspections next week, but there may be, you know, depending on what they find in inspections, uh, the contractor is saying that he's going to be two weeks to come completion on the elevator project uh, but we're not holding off anymore um, so we're actively working in all of our vacant units and commissioner Pistato, the the units where the residents transferred from so their original unit doesn't count as yeah. a vacant the unit that they're yep. in temporarily does count as a vacant right now yeah no i get that yeah. um and we didn't do any work to those that were if a person moved out and uh, had, you know, something was broke. We didn't go in there and like paint or fix it up. We just left it alone. They, most of them left the majority of their things in, in the unit or at least half of them. If there was any specific uh, request or a job that was done, there has been, there have been some people that we did go in and do some repairs. And, and sometimes even right prior to like, as the elevators came back, them moving back if there was a request as they saw their apartment but it wasn't the part of the practice to to just redo their apartment while they were out no okay so so just just as a you know i frank you're doing a great job and just if we can you know i know you know the status of a lot of these units a lot of residents have a lot of problems you know with mold and uh you know things not working uh, applying uh, bathtubs not working water not or whatever it is um we obviously know the buildings are old and in bad shape. So if, if there could be a sense of urgency to get some of these units that are ready to go as fast as possible and get some of these people that are, are in, you know, bad conditions uh, out, you know, immediately, like just hopefully we can do that. I know, I know you are, but just uh, so our residents can feel confident that that's, that the process is going to happen as, fa as fast as possible. Thank you. I do encourage any resident that has a mold problem or a water problem, if, if there's for any reason that their manager is not responding, because we do respond and we have been responding, uh, to please contact me directly, uh, contact Mr. Merchant directly, because we are responding to those immediately. If we get a call in that says there's mold in a unit, we are out to that unit the next day. So please, if you have anyone that's contacting you, please contact us and we'll make sure we take care of that. Yeah, and, I, and that's good to hear. And I don't, I, you know, I get, I get emails and I hear, there's a lot of people that are always constantly saying, my, my, I've got mold in my unit. I don't know, like, I don't know who's, yeah, I don't know if they're making it up or, or, or not. I just, Thank it seems like that. every day I, I would, get a- I would, you know, I would encourage, I would encourage- We're all talking at the well. same time. I would encourage all of our commissioners, if they get a complaint about mold or something like that, to one, emphasize to the person the, the correct channels so that it'll get rectified, and two, for that commissioner to forward those emails on or, or to provide notice in some other form to Mr. Merchant, Mr. Recco, and so forth. Yeah, and I'm so happy that we have, uh, we've got a resident now on the, the board of commissioners uh, in Barbara that, that hopefully will shed a lot of light. And, um, you know, just, just, she, she, she's the only one that lives there. Uh, so that she, she has first right to, to speak about this and, um, and give us all, you know, what's going on firsthand. Agreed. Well, you know, Commissioner Reyes did a great job before, and I know, I know she had uh, some family matters that always take precedence, but welcome back. We're, we're very glad to see you, and you have a long history being one heck of a uh, resident advocate, so thank you. Thank you. And Chair, I, I just have a few questions um, regarding to the director's report. I don't know if I should or, or ask now, but one of the questions that I do have does pertain to what we're speaking about. So it says um, in the report that we got in the summary, it says there are 42 offline units. Um, that So 40, 42 offline units means that we no longer get funding for them, correct? No, that we no longer get hurt by them being empty. So HUD recognizes that there was a need to do work on these units, so they don't penalize us for them being empty. So they, they don't count that against our score. So when while we request... 
You're right. They don't count it against our score. But they count it against us getting funding for those apartments. I believe I, I, that if they're offline, that we do get funded for those apartments. Correct. Quite the opposite. Okay, I'm just asking because I kind of remember vaguely as a resident listening to meetings where I believe the director stated that he was going to ask HUD to remove these and put them offline so that we don't get penalized for Correct. having them full, but then also that we don't get funding for those. those. And I, I may be wrong, but uh, I just I would just like some clarity. I also would like to know of those 42 units, where are they exactly? Are they in senior buildings? Are they, which amps are? are all throughout, are, are, all throughout. Uh, so no, in, in, in the no, they're not all throughout, Frank. They're primarily in Andrew Jackson. I believe 29 of those units are in Andrew Jackson. There's about 10 or 11 in Harrison Gardens and there's one in Christopher Columbus. We made the uh, decision that the senior buildings we would handle through the local 55 crew. And that's because the, 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 those larger units at the family developments were the worst. They were the units that were destroyed the most. Um, and just a quick note um, that the discussion you're referring to, Barbara, was back when we vacated our apartments for the elevator project. Um, we thought, and I still believe, although we've lost that fight, that HUD should have allowed us to take those offline. Um, and they didn't. And uh, I was upset about it, um, but they dug in their heels and they would not allow us to take those offline. Uh, they had to be taken off, they had to be remain vacant because of the elevator project, but you can't win every fight with HUD all the time. I, I absolutely understand. My next question um, pertaining to, to the, the units that are that are empty and now offline. You stated that they were in such bad shape. I think this here proves how important it is for our managers to continuously do these inspections that are mandated. Because to be honest with you, there's no reason if inspections were being done, follow up was being conducted and people were held accountable that we would have 42 units that we could no longer um, have rented to individuals that, that need it. I mean, I see it on a daily basis. There's hundreds of people here in Hoboken that need apartments. There's hundreds of people on a waiting list that need apartments. So it's sad to see that we have 42 that we can't actually um, rent to anyone. Um, so I think that that brings to the point that we do need to stay on top. We need to have accountability with these inspections because yes, they come in it every year as a resident. They come in every year, they do the inspection, they write it down and nothing happens. And that's the honest truth. So I think that Frank, you being on board, I'm so happy you're on board. I, I do hope that you are able to hold everyone accountable with, when it comes to stuff like this, because this is the problem, 42 units, losing 42 units, that's 42 homes that we could have individuals housed in that we can't. And that to me is not fair and it's not, it didn't happen in a housing authority. I, that's my point. So my, my opinion. Um, that's as far as I have right now for the vacant units. I do have some further questions that I would like to ask the director, but I don't know if it's appropriate now or after you're done, director. Chair, you can. Oh, yeah, I don't see any reason why you couldn't keep going. Okay, so my next question is, um, as the resident commissioner, I have been getting a lot of calls about, um, we don't, we're not able to get through to, to our management. We're not able to get through to anyone. No one is returning the calls. And I, and I did speak to you and Frank about this and let you guys know um, about this. But my question is, is everybody, I know we're in the middle of a pandemic, but is everybody back at work? Are the offices actually being um, maintained? Is, is everybody at their full-time, working their full-time schedule? And if so, if not, I know we couldn't discuss it in public, but um, how, how many employees are currently not working due to COVID um, restrictions? I mean, just a number. So, so Frank, you want to talk about the offices first, because our offices are open and they should they and they are answering calls there. We don't currently have anybody that's not per se working because of COVID. Uh, there may be some people who are working from home on different days. Um, 
and that that is different. But yes, there should be somebody picking up the phone, and that is very important. So that is something that as we are as we're moving forward, we got to hold that phone. The most important thing we could do is pick up the phone. And to that example, I know that Mark takes phone calls and I take phone calls, and you know, no matter what time, sometimes you know. But uh, yes, uh, Barbara, I agree with you a hundred percent. The phone is very important. It is. And again, my concern is not that the, the phones may not be answered, but as a resident, if I'm calling for an issue and I ask to speak to my manager, although I leave a message, I would expect a call back within 24 hours. There's no reason why I shouldn't receive a call. I'm pretty sure that 72 people are not calling all at the same time saying I need a call right now. So I think that's one of the things. My next, my next thing is those that are off on COVID are working from home. How are we making sure that when they're working from home, do we have a log of the work that we're doing? Are we paying them for the hours that they're coming in? Or like, how does it work? Because again, I mean, anybody, I know I have staff that works from home, but I have a log. They have to present to me what they're doing for us to pay them. How is the Hoboken Housing Authority doing that? Correct. So uh, is that come across with you being able to work from home due to COVID? Right. Um, we do have... Uh, our computers are part of a system that Angel can monitor and he can see who's using the computers at what time and what websites people are going on and what they're doing while they're on the computer. And um, that is, there. we don't really have many people that are working from home, like on a permanent situation where they might do half a day here, half a day from home. Um, at the end of the day, to your point, the communication and the work has to be there. So the minute that the communication isn't there and the work is suffering, then we need to take a look at that. So that is what, like you said, like you said, with accountability. And I would encourage you, if you have any resident that says they called their manager and didn't get a response, please tell us, because Frank and I need to come down. I have, I have a few that, I have a few that actually have messaged me, DM me, direct message me on, on, on social media pertaining to issues that they said they've continuously brought up to their managers and nothing has been done. And I get it. I, I, I get that we were in the middle of a pandemic. I absolutely get it. But these issues are not just from a year ago. These are issues that they've continuously had. And my next, again, my only other concern was if we're paying people to work from home, we have to hold help them accountable for the work that is being done. And there should be a log of what they're doing so that we know that we're paying them to do work and they're not just sitting home. I'm a, I'm a parent, my kids, I had to, did I wanna send them to school? No, but I had to because I have a job. And I feel like pre-pandemic, they could have made other circums, um, other changes to make sure that they can keep their job. And I, I just feel like as a whole in, in, in everything, I feel some people may be taking advantage and this is not just in the housing authority, I think it's across the board, that some people just seem to take COVID as an advantage to do stuff that Really, I think we need people here on site to do the work and be able to work for the residents because the residents do need it. Yes, ma'am. I agree. So. Okay. I think that was it. Um, so I think that was it for now. Our special co capital projects, the housing finance agency project, um, the phase one elevators at Andrew Jackson are complete. Roofing at Andrew Jackson is complete. Phase two is underway, as we mentioned earlier, on the last four buildings, and we do expect completion uh, by the end of May on those in the next couple of weeks. Uh, the one elevator at Adams Garden um, uh, is, uh, is complete, and the other uh, has projected completion on the second elevator uh, built, is expected now in the first week of June. Uh, those got delayed just a little bit. The contractor did have some COVID issues, just as our maintenance department has had some, not necessarily our management, but our maintenance department. And uh, so they've had, but, but a small delay. They're still within their contract time, uh, but at our regular every other week job meetings, their original production was mid-May and it looks like they're pushed back a couple of weeks, but uh, we're pretty well on track. Um, I did attach the proposals for the 2021 CDBG funding. Um, you know what, I'm, I'm just thinking whether I attach those proposals. I'll look at the end of the meeting. If I haven't, I'll make sure I send them out to you. Um, sorry if I didn't. Uh, but we did review them with the Finance um, and Capital Committee. Um, and uh, we're pleased to have that partnership with the city. 
Uh, we included some basic infrastructure repairs on our video and security systems uh, that are becoming outdated and are badly needed and repairs to our boiler systems. Now, should we get this money, this money would be coming in um, uh, at the beginning of 2022. So it's not uh, funds that we'd get immediately, uh, but for our long-term good, it would be very, very beneficial. The gate upgrades at Fox Hill and Adams are underway. Uh, the contractor has started at Adams. And once that done, he'll move over to Fox Hill. Uh, by the way, we are trying to find some funding for some type of fencing system over at Monroe as well. I don't know why they didn't put fencing initially over at Monroe like they did at Adams and um, Fox Hill. Uh, maybe because it's so expensive. There's a, it's a long track in the back of, of, of Monroe and it's a very expensive project to do. So we're, we're looking at identifying some funds that we might be able to do a parking gate over at Monroe. Roofing replacement at Harrison Gardens is underway and going well. The new compactor at Harrison Gardens is installed and five more um, are to be completed under this contract and are underway. That should give us good working compactors at each site. Uh, specifications are underway for the replacement of seven emergency generators and specifications are being developed for the repair of the facade at Monroe Gardens. Um, we're also taking a hard look at the Adams facade and we'll be meeting this month with the Facilities and Capital Projects Committee regarding those projects. They are going to be very costly projects. Um, we met with the architect last week on both projects, um, and uh, the numbers are pretty high. Uh, we're going to continue meeting with him as he refines his plans, and we're going to have to sit down um, with the Capital um, and Finance um, subcommittee and I think make some choices on how we're going to approach both projects um, and then come back to the board with it uh, we hope next month uh, because we're we've got some big choices over there um, we're talking probably about six hundred thousand dollars a building uh, to do the entire side so uh, we're working on that right now it's it's in process um, the revised ACOP is at HUD for approval. They've given us some comments and we're incorporating those comments. Uh, we should be to the ACOP committee this month uh, to re-review any changes from that ACOP um, that uh, you approved a couple months back. Um, and uh, we hope to get those changes and have everything back to you by June because we're biting at the bit to get that over and, and done with. Um, we have a proposed, that new proposed contract with our software and we're moving forward with that waiting list. We have placed the project-based voucher program on hold until the current legal discussion can be resolved. Staff is in the process of the work for the REAC inspections. Uh, we do have teams that are by plan going through um, every REAC area and level. Um, and this, and will, this is and will remain a major effort throughout our summer because it's very important that we do well on the next REAC inspection. The fiscal year 2019 audit and is complete the 2020 and ready for review. So we do need to bring the finance committee back together. We, we had one meeting and then got off track. So we need to bring them back and they're gonna be finishing up the 2020 before too long. Resident services, I do attach our resident services report, but before I ask, um, Daniel, who I don't know if he's on the call or not. Uh, yes, he is to do that. I would like to note at the Resident Services Committee um, that we started to have an in-depth discussion on um, a program called the Family Self-Sufficiency Program or the FSS program and initiating that program here at the Hoboken Housing Authority. Um, we expect that again in June uh, to have a draft plan to you um, uh, to initiate that program. We are actively out there looking for some funding that we're gonna need to initiate the program. This program, um, I've run a couple of them before in my career. Um, it's a great program. It's a, it's a program that, that directly benefits our residents, uh, does a workout plan with the residents, does a five-year improvement plan, 
and uh, at the end of that gives some significant dollars in the resident's pocket after they graduate from the program and it would just be wonderful to have uh, so we're working hard at that we've got a very pretty good draft we're going to be tweaking it and bringing you back that draft in june so we're down the line on that um, having said that i'll give it over to daniel to talk a little bit about his report Thank you, Director. Hello, Commissioners. Um, so my report is just a quick summary of uh, some highlighted items relating to resident services programming and service uh, support to our community. The director spoke on COVID testing and COVID vaccination. Uh, on COVID vaccine uh, clinic, we will continue, uh, the city of Hoboken will continue to provide the clinic at the 221 Jackson Street every Thursday for the foreseeable future. So that gives our resident an opportunity to continually come and, and, get, uh, and get vaccinated, especially for those that miss today's vaccination clinic. Um, the information, of course, will continue to uh, post it on our website, use our social media, in addition to our next, so to be able to engage our community, as well as uh, posting flyers in all of our common areas and door to door for the vaccine. Uh, testing will continue. COVID testing will continue at 221 for the foreseeable future. The next date is uh, May 21st uh, from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. So we thank the city of Hoboken and New Jersey Department of Health for their continued support to our community uh, here at the Hoboken Housing Authority. I also would like to highlight that the Hoboken Food Pantry continue to serve our community uh, um, with their uh, on-site distribution here at uh, Harrison Courtyard. Their next distribution day is going to be the 21st. Uh, additionally, they also have some special shopping hours with non-grocery items, uh, some hygiene pads and other items, diapers, baby formula, et cetera. And our families can pick those up at the 1301 Washington Street location on May 25th. And of course, that information can also be found on our website. Um, we'd like to mention, that uh, we have the Hoboken Housing Authority approved by program providers based on an RFP that was, that was uh, published. And these five program providers that are providing support services and, and programming to the Hoboken Housing Authority is Community Lifestyles, Amazing True Society, Hopes, Boys and Glo Girls Club, and True Mentors. Each of these uh, organizations are already working at the Housing Authority and some of them you will see more events and programs uh, coming to our community. So we do have any number of services, support and resources that are being provided to our community. If any of our families uh, have any questions relating to these programs, services or support, they can always reach out to our main office at 201-798-0370. They can also uh, call me on my cell phone. They can text me at 201-253. 3049, and I'll be able to get back to them with additional information. Uh, as the resident services build capacity, we'll be able to provide more services, more resources, additional programming, and improve our communication to our community. I encourage everyone to please follow us on our social media platforms. We provide plenty of information there. Additionally, our website, www.myhhanj.com, also, if you have a cell phone and you would like to receive text messages on alerts, notices, programming, and events at the Hoboken Housing Authority, you can text the word, the number 4HHA to 888-777. You can find uh, instructions and information on how to connect on Nexo at our website. There's gonna be a number of programming and events that are coming up in the next week. Uh, please connect and we'll be able to uh, provide you that information. Thank you, Director. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you, Daniel. And Daniel, thank you for the Mother's Day um, events. They were great. You didn't mention it, I didn't mention that, but they were great. And we all look forward to Father's Day events coming up as well. Um, they, were, they, were, they were wonderful and uh, our heart goes out to everyone. Um, hey, uh, uh, Daniel, I just wanted to say that um, you didn't, I don't know when it got set up, but you didn't mention about the Nixle alerts. Um, I subscribe to it. Uh, I'm starting to get the messages, which is fantastic. Um, 
I, I think you should mention, you know, how residents can sign up so that they can get all alerts for the housing authority, which is fantastic. Thank you, sir. Yeah, we will. Yeah, thank you, Daniel. You, you do a great job. And uh, Commissioner Seitzman will tell me I'm using Yiddish correctly. You're a real, you're a real mensch. You're doing a great job. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Is there any way that maybe a flyer could be sent to the residents, letting them know exactly how to do it, where they see it, like text to this? Because I know he just said it, but it's hard for somebody if they, they're they not computer savvy or you know too savvy with their phones. Maybe if we can just put a flyer out, if you'd like to get HHA Nixos, please do it from your phone. And yes, I have, one time, yes, what, what happened? Commissioner, we'll have it out. Uh, actually, I have a flyer already, so we'll have okay. it out tomorrow. Thank mm -hmm. you. How many people have signed up? Uh, we have. So we uploaded. We uploaded some of the information, some of the residents. So we have about uh, eleven hundred. In addition to the signups. Wait, no, eleven hundred people signed up for the next whole alerts. Yeah, we have eleven hundred in addition to the one that we have added. So we go in and we added the uh, residents of the housing authority, inviting them. In addition to the signups, we have about 1,100 signups. It's amazing, great. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's great. And, and do, they, do they get charged with a text? The no, I think it's included in their plan. Most, uh, most plans are included. Yeah, these are free text messages. Great, mm -hmm. that's, that's yeah. wonderful. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Is, uh, is, is, our, is our police going to give a monthly uh, update as they said they were going to do a couple months ago? Sergeant. <laughs> yes, uh, good evening, everybody. How are you? Good evening, Sergeant. Okay, uh, with respect to, uh, I spoke to um, Director Recco on the phone earlier today about uh, there was an issue with... Um, individuals uh, trespassing at 220 Adams, 221 Jackson. Um, we, uh, as a department, we've been, we've been uh, trying to handle that for the past month. And uh, also um, there was, the question was brought up, can the defiant trespass uh, statute be, be issued uh, outside and around the building if they are caught sleeping uh, or uh, loitering on the bench and uh, not belong on housing property? And the answer to that is yes. So um, I know I know we've been dealing with uh, a certain individual in uh, 220 Adams. I have dealt with them on uh, numerous occasions over the past month. Uh, summonses have been issued. Um, and uh, again, um, as far as uh, I don't know if Sergeant Collins is on tonight, if he has anything to add. Um, but from, from my end, I, I've um, looking into uh, 220 Adams and uh, 221 Jackson with the uh, trespassing issues. Great, thank you. Any, I'm sorry, go ahead, Director. I don't know if Sergeant Collins is on or not, but I think his next step then, now that we've cemented that, was that it was gonna be an internal memo over at the police saying that that's the new procedure that uh, that we can deal with defined yes it, it's it's being addressed at roll calls uh as far as uh, having the the uh, units conduct uh, periodic checks of those buildings because we've had like i said over the past month especially over the past month we've had numerous uh calls uh especially from uh, 220 adams and 221 jackson about people sleeping in the hallway that didn't belong in the building yes great okay Thank you for that, Sergeant. Appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome, sir. Can I say something pertaining to this? To this? Yes. Hi. How you doing, Mrs. Reyes? I'm sorry. How are you? I did get a, a few complaints from residents, and my advice to them was I didn't see it. It's hard for me to call, and after the situation, I obviously can't call because it's not happening, but I right. have a resident say to me that they have um, seen individuals in the hallways where their pants have been down there. Um, and this is in the residential buildings. Um, and I also had another resident say that they saw someone doing something that masturbating basically in, in one of the, um, in one of the hallways. And I, I get it. They're scared. I get it. They don't want to call the police because they're scared of them. But 
I'll be honest, in all the years that I've, I've never heard that, this is something new that's happening now as far, I mean, I've heard of them sleeping, but all with yep. your down and, and doing yes. this stuff in the hallway, I haven't personally experienced it or seen it, but it's concerning because I have, you know, there's children. Uh, absolutely. I agree with you. And as far as the, the masturbating incident, I didn't hear anything about that, but the we, we, uh, the call with the uh, pants down, that was Mr. Pickett in 220 Adam Street, which I was actually on that call. Um, we wound up sending him to the hospital that day, and he was issued a summons for uh, defiant trespass. That was in uh, 220 Adam Street. Yeah. I guess he did it there, but did it here as well, because actually <laughs> it was the same individual that I heard about down here. So what, what I would suggest to you to say to the residents, and I tell people all the time on the street, you can remain anonymous. If you see something, you want to say something, call call the police department, 420-2100. Any, any hour of the day, you don't have to give your name. You don't have to give your information. You don't have to tell us where you are. You just give us the location of the problem, and our dispatchers will send officers to that location, and we'll handle the, uh, the problem as is. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Anybody else? Thank you, Sergeant. Always a pleasure to work with you. The Thank you. Thank you, Director. Thank you. And that's uh, that concludes my portion. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, so we're going to move on to the, as per the suspension of the agenda, to the public portion. Who do we have set up to speak? And I want to remind speakers they are limited to five minutes. You have Ms. Rawlings. Angel, allow Ms. Rawlings, please. I, I actually have to promote her to panelists uh, temporarily because she is using a very old version and is not allowed to talk unless we promote to panelists. Is that okay? That's fine. Welcome, Ms. Rollins. You have the floor. You mute it. Can you hear me? Welcome, Ms. Rollins. You have the floor. All right. Uh, after seeing you reading the article, you, need it. you do want to turn down the volume, though, on whatever source. No, I'm on Can you hear me? Welcome, Ms. Rollins. You have the floor. All right. Uh, after seeing you reading the article, you need it. Well, you do want to turn down the volume or whatever. So no, I'm on the internet. Can you hear me? Alright, after seeing you reading the article, you do want to turn down the volume or whatever. So no, I'm yeah, I'm going back and forth between a computer and a laptop. After seeing and reading the article about the five Section 8 voucher debacle, I think Mr. Lewitt should resign. He hasn't done much for the residents at all. I know this. I'm a resident. I should know. Uh, from August 13th, Mr. Mello called my house yelling at me, saying that I'm wrong for having a negative opinion about Mr. Recco's performance and the appointment of Mr. Sanford and his obvious hatred for Mr. Garcia, our former director. He said he was gonna back me for commissioner, but after putting out, my, putting out that I didn't support Mr. Sanford, he said he was withdrawing my support and I told him I didn't want his support. I will continue to be an advocate and help those who need help. Mr. Mello showed his true colors. I don't want to hear about him bragging $3,000 a month to live in Sky Club. That doesn't bother me. I care about my fellow residents and how they are being neglected by the current director. In the last four years, where, have, where has he done in terms where the walls are falling apart, windows have mold, Folks are suffering from noise 24-7, mold in bathrooms and bedrooms, and nothing being done about it. Is that being a great director? That's a joke. 
just remember all the money that you have and the job where you make your money can all be gone in an instant and you shouldn't look down on anyone those at the top can one day be at the bottom and struggling and they need to end up in public housing and i put out on facebook can residents tell me how the housing authority has gotten better under mr recco i have not seen any improvements is your unit free of mold is your building clean is everything good in your building do you have noise issues that have not been taken care of are the walls in your unit okay are they falling apart is the bathroom okay i have gotten several complaints regarding those issues that are still outstanding and they've made complaints to the director the manager they've emailed the commissioners and still nothing done i've been dealing with two residents with noise and to this day as of yesterday yesterday the noise is still going on you're mentioning transfers emergency transfers and two of these residents should have had their transfers by now one was promised the unit and is still waiting and waiting and waiting i'm glad that i don't have to have anyone telling me what to do or what to say i will continue supporting my residents and i have opinions and i will keep saying it i don't like what the way things are going under Mr. Recco. I don't support James Sanford. And those are my opinions. And that's too bad if nobody likes it. All right. So the next speaker will be and thank you for your constructive criticism. That's always appreciated. Uh, Ms. Priestley, you have to um, you have to unmute yourself. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So oh. Ms. Falco has her hand raised. So, um, but I'm not sure she's an attendee. So, do you want to to allow her to speak? She, she's very experienced with meeting, so we'll offer it up yeah. to her, and I'm sure she'll let us know if she doesn't want to. Okay. Councilwoman Falco, are you with us? Do you do you want to speak tonight? Okay. All I right. Think we're, let's let's move on. If she does want to speak, she'll. I'm sure. Okay. She'll... Here she is. She says. Um, she does. Okay. I, I do. Yes, she does. Councilwoman, welcome. The floor is yours. Oh, thank you. I didn't know how. I didn't know I had to wait to be unmuted. I'm like, I do want to speak, but what do I do? <laughs> okay. No worries. Good evening. Good evening, uh, commissioners, directors, Frank, everyone who's on here, um, Sergeant, uh, Lourdes. Just uh, <laughs> quickly. I would like to make uh, three comments. Um, so the first is that I am going to be working with Daniel, although the communication has been a little choppy, but we hope to improve in that area for a brain health and a mental wellness check. We are partnering with Act Now and a couple of other organizations so that we can have this event in the senior buildings to do a mental health and wellness day check in on uh, the seniors. So I will, that event, we have a tentative date and we'll work with Daniel to get that coordinated um, for Fox Hill and Adams locations. And then we will bring that information to you uh, for the meeting in June. Uh, Hudson Regional Health will also do screenings and Act Now will do mental health screenings because it's been a difficult time for COVID. So not only will we then do mental health screenings, but we will identify um, plans and solutions for the residents to deal with um, any mental health issues or concerns that they may have. Um, I also hope that in speaking with the city and Leo, who is responsible for health and human services, that we all can work collaboratively to create and 
um, to create opportunities for our senior citizens that have been in lockdown for such a long time. And we take advantage of this spring weather. I know Hopes recently has done an activity. I saw them there today. And so we just need to continue with that momentum so that we are providing services to our senior citizens. And I, I appreciate being a part of that. Um, the second thing I'd like to ask for the commissioners, if I could have your support in tabling the resolution that will allow for the Boys and Girls Club to occupy um, the basketball courts for every day. Um, the director, Leo, and I are working to put together a league that involves the entire city. And so we want to work with the Boys and Girls Club so that the games are not just played in the housing authority, but the games rotate and that we work together to have one league that is inclusive of all of Hoboken youth, not just have certain kids playing in certain communities and other kids playing in other communities. Our goal is to really have a um, inclusive basketball camp and there's no need to duplicate services. We should have one, uh, one um, basketball league for the summer. The last thing, um, that I would like to ask your input, uh, Director Daniel and commissioners, is that I've been in discussions with some residents that want to have a voice, that want to be involved, and they don't have any direction of where to go. Um, we saw last month when the meeting of the RAB board attempted to go public, but that didn't sustain being public. And so residents are coming to me with their concern of transparency and wanting to know how they can be involved in certain issues that you all have mentioned tonight that there are specific committees for. We've collectively identified four different areas such as security, youth programming, uh, facilities, which includes grounds and maintenance. So. You all have committees in these areas. There are also, um, they are also part of what the resident advisory board works on, but what it feels like to residents, and I don't wanna speak necessarily on their behalf, I'm going, I want them to call in and express them this themselves is that they don't feel included in this process. They don't feel like they know what information comes from the meetings. Um, they don't feel like they know when the meetings are, when they can be a part of it. And as it pertains to those four areas, they wanna be involved in creating solutions that can benefit the entire community and work together collaboratively. So if you could just give me some advice on how I can tell the residents that come to me, how they can be more involved in this process, I would appreciate that. Good. Thank you, and and perfect timing. You, I thought you were going to go over five minutes, Councilwoman, but <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, you know what, I, Councilwoman, I would actually love to, um, uh, you know, I'll ping you, or you can ping me offline, and uh, we'll coordinate. I would love to invite you to a, a very soon to a residents uh, services committee meeting, so you can uh, talk about both those issues you brought up, both the um, the league that you're working on with Director Pellegrini, is who you're referring to, correct? Uh, for basketball. Yeah. Yes. And so I, I did not mention, I for, wait, just quickly, I forgot to mention that I spoke today at the Hudson County Commissioners uh, meeting and asked them to table that as well so that we have a two week span to work with uh, the director at the Boys and Girls Club to work with Leo and so that we can all be on the same page. Okay, great. You know, and you still kept it under five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, great. And we'll, so we'll, we'll do that. Um, invite you to a resident service committee so you can give us the rundown on that and, and how that's progressing. And also um, uh, these, these various issues with um, just transparency and the residents having a voice. So I'd be glad to, uh, I know you're, you're ultra connected to a lot of our residents and I would love to hear your thoughts. Okay, so thank you. And thank we you for coming out tonight. That at the RAV board level too. So I think when we get together at the Resident Services Committee, I think we can make some real progress. I'd like to say something, Chair? Yes, Commissioner, the floor is yours. I do have, um, my children attend the Boys and Girls Club. So I want to make straight transparency. My children do attend the Boys and Girls Club. 
And I understand where they're saying that, you know, they want it to be inclusive. I've not known the Boys and Girls Club to not be inclusive of anyone in the city. Last year, we had a basketball league. We had children from uptown, from applied individuals that lived in the condos on Madison Street and so forth. Their children also played on the league. Um, they have been very instrumental. I'll be honest with you. My children have paid for the last three years. Erica can tell you, I actually, she actually sat with me at um, some of my children's game. We invited her over and she did see. So I understand where I get it that the city wants to do a whole, a whole league. What I don't want to happen with that basketball league, with that basketball court is exactly what's happening with the football league, with the football field, where we go through the city then to get permission to utilize our own parks. That, that's one, that's one of my concerns. Secondly, is that I will stand behind the Boys and Girls Club because like I said, as a parent of theirs and um, for the last three, four years that they've had this league, they have been instrumental to the children here where the children had nothing and nobody wanted to do anything down here. They did it. They kept these kids during COVID. They had their basketball league and not one child was con contracted COVID. That's how safe they were. So I will stand behind them. I, I, I know it, I'm one voice, but I just wanted to just make that absolutely clear to everyone. I'm sorry, you're muted. Shane. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, and we can we can discuss that a little further when we get to the, the vote that um, the councilwoman referenced. Uh, who is next to speak? Ray Rodriguez. Ray Rodriguez. Mr. Rodriguez, you have the floor. Hi, everyone. God bless everyone. If everyone can hear me. Yes. God bless you, Mello. Um, yes. I would like to address several things. Uh, one is that uh, I want to inform everybody today that uh, yesterday was the launching of the new guitar program, that uh, the new, new guitar free classes at 605 uh, Jackson outside. Uh, we're hoping to get back into the community room because uh, we have 12 guitars. We uh, with, uh, I think her name is Emily Jabor. She was uh, instrumental in helping us uh, get the funding to uh, be able to purchase guitars, find the instructor. And we are now moving forward every uh, second Wednesday of the month this guy will be coming down, we are paying him. And the uh, fourth Wednesday of the month, I mean the uh, fourth week of the month, Wednesday, uh, um, he'll be coming down and teaching these kids. The, the kids will be taking home guitars so they can practice uh, after the parents sign an agreement. Um, so in case uh, any damage to the, the equipment, that we can uh, uh, get some funding back from the parents so we can replenish the, 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 the equipment. Uh, so, so far that's working very well. Uh, we had so many kids from the private school around the corner from on 7th Street. Uh, I don't know what the name of that school is. Uh, um, so there was a lot of kids there uh, and also kids wanting to join the karate program which I'm very proud of. Uh, and I'm looking forward to this year, making sure that uh, one student in particular, uh, the son of Zuma Cabrera, uh, before COVID, he was invited to the invitationals uh, uh, to uh, try out for the Olympic team, uh, the first ever Olympic team in, in, uh, in karate in the Olympics. Karate's never been in the Olympics. It was always judo, uh, taekwondo, but he was invited. I, I told, you know, one thing I made clear is that you might not get picked. You might not make it, but it doesn't matter. We go give it the best shot we can. And you're representing your, your area, your, where you live is, is important because when you say, hey, everybody, I'm here. I'm, I'm from Hoboken, New Jersey. That's important. Okay, because that's gonna you're gonna make history if you get into onto the team, because no one's ever had a team like that before. Anyway, this year we're looking forward to having getting this kid back on track. Hopefully, maybe I can get other kids to uh, go in that direction, 
Either way, it doesn't matter. I'm very proud of another student, uh, uh, Brianna Crandall. She made it into the armed services and uh, I'm very proud of her. Uh, another thing I wanted to touch base on is uh, the equipment at the community room. Guys, be aware that that equipment has been there a decade, a decade. And when it was, when stuff was being taken, it could only happen from people that had keys. Okay, plain and simple. And when I ever brought it to your attention, you know, at that, you know, every time I brought it to your attention, I didn't want you guys to feel that I wanted money to, you know, to get equipment again or different equipment whatever was taken it, the money that i ever got from you guys you know was to replenish whatever was taken now the thing is is that if you remove the equipment number one you have ceramic floors okay you have ceramic tiles one kid i mean one kid on my watch i've been here 11 years now on my watch no one's ever got hurt if you take out that the mats, if you take out the, the 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 sparring equipment for them to learn how to protect themselves, if you take out that stuff, number one, you're gonna have a lot of injuries, okay? And if I have a track record, guys, and no one's ever got hurt on my watch, allow me to continue making champions without hurting them. But don't take out the equipment that's already there. By the way. Um, uh, uh, sent, uh, uh, Mayor Stacks gave me the cabinet for two years now we've had that cabinet there and nothing's been taken There's, it's under my lock and key no one has access to it not even the housing authority so I'm asking you guys matter of fact I'm going to beg you don't take out my equipment because these kids need it there they need it there and I can't be I live in if you guys know me I live in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. I've been commuting to your neighborhood for 11 years. Never said, hey, you guys, you know, pay my tolls, pay my easy pass. I never did any of that stuff. Rodriguez, I, I do, I do so have to ask you, to you guys. So please, man, don't take out my, my equipment. Dave, I'm sorry. Thank you. I love you guys. God bless. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next speaker. Next speaker would be Mr. Levant Smith. Has his hand raised? Commissioner Smith, you have the floor. Mr. Smith, you have the floor. Hello, can you hear me? We sure can. Did you hear the beginning part or did I get caught off in the middle? No, I, the first thing I heard was, can you hear me? All right, greetings commissioners and greetings everyone else on the call, greetings public. Um, my first, uh, I'll start by addressing Ms. Falco's comments. Um, first, um, I like to point out that it was Ms. Falco who basically tried to negotiate the seat that was Ms. Sam Mr. Sanford was appointed to and, uh, you know, basically told me that I have to back Mayor Bala politically if I wanted to be reappointed to that seat. But that's besides the point. I'd like to address some of the things she spoke about. First being her second point about the basketball league. And while it's wonderful after three and a half years of being a councilwoman, that you finally take an interest in the Hoboken Housing Authority and, and actually are willing to do something, there's no need for you to stop a program that's been in progress and been successful for so long just so you have something to, to tout on your campaign trail. That, that, that is completely inappropriate. I understand it's a campaign year and you wanna put your name on something, but that's not what the Housing Authority is here for. And that's not what this is about. Um, again, so again, when you, try to influence me to be politically supportive of Mayor Bala. That's not what being appointed to the Hoboken Housing Authority City um, Commissioner seat is about. It's about supporting the Hoboken Housing Authority community. All right. Second, uh, secondly, I'd like to address her next point about the um, situation with the RAB board meeting that was basically hijacked. 
I mean, the, the rap board has been meeting for years. They have a, a set way they do things. And it's just interesting that all of a sudden the executive director tried to hijack that meeting with an agenda. And Ms. Falco, again, tried to subvert the rap board's authority and, and duly elected as it, as it may be by the residents by saying she has this separate group of residents which came to her, which I can show you text messages and emails that she actually goes to them. So it's not like these residents come to Ms. Falco looking for guidance. Ms. Re Ms. Falco goes to these residents looking for people that can spread her message. So please stop with the politics and the theater here at the Hoboken Housing Authority. All right, my next, I'll start by asking a couple of questions of particular commissioners and I'll start with Commissioner Aaron Lewitt. Mr. Lewitt, are you please going to resign after receiving the determination from HUD that your vote back in December, where we asked you three times not to vote, not to participate in the vote, and you still participated in the vote and voted to give the Housing Authority vouchers, the, the Section 8 vouchers, the tenant-based vouchers that you want to convert to project-based vouchers to support the project at the MBS housing, at the YMCA, and not to support the homeless people, because if you want to support the homeless people, keep them as tenants base and give them to each homeless person. You want project-based vouchers that will fund the project that you plan on building a community center. Again, so you want these vouchers to fund that project in perpetuity. So if you really cared about the homeless people, you wouldn't convert the, the, the tenant-based vouchers to project-based vouchers. You'd keep them as tenant-based vouchers and give them to the tenants. But again, you're subverting the Hoboken Housing Authority community of which many members have waited over 15 to 20 years for these Section 8 vouchers. But you chose to prioritize the project at the YMCA and MBS Housing over the needs of the Hoboken Housing Authority community. And that's not my opinion, that's HUD's opinion. That you subverted your fiduciary responsibility to the Hoboken Housing Authority community to prioritize the project being built at the YMCA. And I ask you to resign. And I've asked you to resign an email and I've just heard a resident ask you to resign and I've spoken to the RAB board. They're gonna send emails to the city council and I've already sent emails to the city council asking you to resign. So I just don't know why it hasn't happened yet. I don't know what interest you have in this community other than to try to destroy it. So that's my question to you, Mr. Lewitt. Are you going to resign? Yeah, we, we actually, it's, it's said at the start of our meetings that there's not- Okay, so he's not gonna get into a back and forth. That's fine, we'll move on to our next no, commissioner. Not. Commissioner Reyes, I just want to make sure that in your support of the residents, and I, I heard you speak so passionately about, you know, the workers who aren't reporting to work. The main one is Executive Director Reco, who isn't reporting to work. He's basically never there. As a matter of fact, he set up a meeting with a former resident, uh, Lewis Johnson, whose grandmother, Johnson, Mama Johnson Field, that you were just talking about, how we, you know, it got subverted by the city and we have to go through them to get that field is named after his grandmother. And he said, scheduled a meeting, Executive Director Recco scheduled a meeting with this young man and then gave him like the cold shoulder and haven't followed up with him in over a month, which is completely disrespectful and inappropriate. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I do have to stick to our five minute rule though. So thank uh, I don't think I've had five minutes yet. I don't yeah, think I've had five right. minutes yet. I didn't, I didn't start the timer until you began speaking. So yes, you have. Uh, so now we need to move on to the next speaker. Thank you very much for your input. It's appreciated. Oh, um, we have a, we don't have any more speakers. Uh, we do have a comment, if you'd like me to read from Clerk Matthews. Clerk yes, Matthews, okay, he says, greetings. I'm actually still on the HHA wait list and I have no public comment except to say that I was very glad to get the next advisory about the HHA meetings and please keep, keep these advisories and Zoom links coming. Thanks. That is Clark Matthews. Great. All right, thank you. Lord, is there any email? Uh, yes, there were three emails. We forward them to Frank. They're regarding transfers. Okay. So There's that a Geraldine Santos that wants to speak on the comments. And also, Lords, I'll just acknowledge earlier in the meeting, there was a Melissa Walker who was participating, who did have her hands ra hand raised, but uh, from what I can tell, she's no longer participating in the meeting. All right, so okay. is Ms. Santa, I've seen the comment, thank you, Commissioner Vega. Um, is Ms. Santos able to join in? Because the floor is hers if she is. 
Angel, can you allow Ms. Santos? Yes. Hello, everyone. Hello, Ms. Hi. Um, um, I'm a tenant of the HHA, and I have been um, for the majority of my life. Um, as Ms. Falco stated earlier, I am one of the tenants that have spoken to her about my many concerns with the things that are going um, on in my neighborhood and with my community. So, like she said, we have narrowed it down to four specific areas in which we feel um, we need to um, actively work um, towards some solutions. And one of the areas that um, calls um, uh, the most out to me is with um, having activities for the youth. I am a mother of five. I have three teenagers currently in my home. And... Um, you know, uh, their access to any activities in the city of Hoboken are limited because, you know, um, we don't always have the, the f I guess, the funds to get them outside activities that um, need to be paid for. So I would love to, um, uh, I would be excited at the possibility of organizing activities for the children and youth who are part of the HHA community. I would like to facilitate a space for them where they can feel free to make new friends, interact, and develop strong relationships with some positive role models, and simultaneously also provide them with an opportunity to develop new skills, encourage any talents, and finally, just enjoy some good, clean fun. Um, you know, they say it takes a village to raise a child, and I'm a true believer in that. And I feel that our community, especially with um, you know, in the HHA needs more of that. And um, I'm like, since I am a resident, I'm willing to volunteer my services in whatever um, way I can help. Um, but I would love to um, find, I guess, some like backup from the HHA itself. And basically, that's just really what I wanted to say. It just really concerns me that, um, you know, we hear so many, um, complaints about people loitering and hang all these like young kids hanging around in the buildings or outside but what are we really offering them in place of that and i feel like it's time for us to you know give them some good healthy options as what else to do with their time all right thank you thank you Ms. santos uh, just to follow up on uh, Commissioner, I apologize. Sure. I'm so sorry. I just want to say something in regards to Ms. Santos' remarks. I do want to say that as, as the resident um, commissioner here, I have spoken with Danny briefly over the phone. We've had a few conversations. And, and I even said it to, to Mr. Merchant and Reco that my goal here is obviously to bring other things to the communities. One of my main goals is to take Harrison back, Gardens back for the families. Um, I feel like that is, I mean, when I moved here, it was the kids today. It's not the kids. Everybody knows it. So I do have some plans in, in place that, you know, some, some goals that I'm, I'm looking forward and I would love to share with you guys later on, maybe um, with everyone, because it's things that it's going to incorporate our families, it's going to incorporate our children, and at the same time, it's going to hopefully take away all the negativity that's coming on here that we see, because Ms. Mills is actually a neighbor of mine. She lives across the street. I know her. So um, I, do, I do encourage those residents that do want to volunteer and participate, reach out to me. Maybe we can put something together. It's not about the money. It's just about putting something together. They, we, we, if we get the tenants involved, we can take it back and it could be our community again and the children. So I just want to make, make that clear to, to everyone. And thank you, Danny, for working with me on this. Absolutely, Commissioner. Uh, you know, your insight is invaluable. So thank you and keep, keep bringing it to us because it's, it's really very useful. All right, uh, and that's it uh, for speakers. Mr. Mr. Chair, can I interrupt? Yes. Uh, so, Lord, with respect to the email that was received, if any of that is or was timely and is legally appropriate, that should be read into the record. 
Although if it's although if it's about transfers, it's probably not legally appropriate. I don't know the subject of it, so I sure. can't tell you without seeing it whether or not it is. I just want to make sure. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, Dan Daniel, as for, I'm sorry. <laughs> if it is an individual uh, talking about their own potential transfer, that would be the same if that individual stood up and spoke at an authority meeting in the public portion. Okay, they were forward to Frank. Frank, those emails were forward to you. Can you just read them? And we have one more person, Gary Greenberg would like to speak. Okay. Um, Mr. Merchant, do you need a moment? Do you, do you want me to have uh, Mr. Greenberg speak first or do you- So I just wanna, I'm looking at the emails now. I just wanna make sure the emails do have personal names, ages, addresses, and are very specific about the individuals. Okay. If I can read them if you like me to. Is it the individual who sent the email? Uh, yes. That, as my position is that's the same as if that individual got up and spoke at an authority meeting. But we're, okay. But, but, but before he speaks, Mr. Fitzpatrick, I mean, I just want to err on the side of caution on this. I mean, was possibly somebody, it, I mean, it, shouldn't it, we get confirmation that that was their intent for this to be on the public record? Frank, if you'd like to forward those to me, I can take a look sure. at them quickly and give sure. you some thoughts. Meanwhile, uh, Mr. Chair, you can move forward with Mr. Greenberg. Okay, so Mr. Greenberg, if we could admit him uh, or allow him to speak, he will have the floor. Okay, Angel, allow Mr. Greenberg, please. Sorry, I don't, I don't see that name here. Who, who I'm, Is there a phone number that he's on? Forgetting which of you said that Mr. Greenberg uh, wanted to speak. I think it's Luis Quinones. Luis is, not, is after Greenberg. That's him? Okay. No, well, you could, you could promote Luis right now. All right. We'll wait so, on Mr. Greenberg. All right, so. Mr. Quinones, the floor is yours. Thank you, I appreciate that, Commissioner. Um, <clears throat> I just, I just wanted to, to address the matter that, uh, that's kind of been ongoing. So, again, for those that don't know me, for the public, and for those residents that are looking for programs for us, and when I say us, I say a housing authority residents. I've been part of the housing authority for four years now, uh, and I've built a nonprofit organization scraps from scrap so as I continue to build and as I continue to grow as an individual and as a uh, CEO we are running programs for our housing residents our families that live here in housing it hasn't been perfect but we have been doing programs I am so thankful to actually have the opportunity to run programs now we ran a summer camp program, 2018, 2019, 2020. And now we're in our process of doing it again. I don't hear anyone talking about anything about, hey, Community Lifestyle is a organization that's for us because I'm not able to be doing stuff because you're not allowing me to actually get access to the residents. I'm starting to, but there's a parent there that just got on that said, hey, I got teens. That parent should have known that Community Lifestyle back in 2018, 2019 had the opportunity to have an after school program for teens and for kids inside your community room. And it's a shame the fact that we are not actually having those programs. And yes, we can blame it on COVID, but Community Lifestyle was here before COVID. Community Lifestyle was doing stuff for the residents before COVID for the residents and families and whatever you want to call them, us, it's for us. And I'm speaking as a parent, I'm speaking as a housing authority resident. That's not probably from the housing authority from you guys, but I born and raised in the projects. So I'm speaking in that term. I think it's time for maybe a little bit more backing 
if you guys really wanted to actually back us and us do programs inside the housing authority, we put in a proposal, we, which I appreciate that we got accepted, but there is no communication. Like we, we want to take Harrison Garden and Barbara mentioned it. I want to have an after school activity. Nobody's mentioning that. You approved it, but you're not, you're not saying, hey, by the way, Community Lifestyle put in a proposal for it, and Community Lifestyle is actually going to do it. Community Lifestyle is running an, app, an actual flag football program that's for our residents, and it's including everyone. But we're making it sure that it's our residents, our families. So I don't understand. And so again, going back, I appreciate everything, but I want to make it clear. We have a team program. Teams take the city where our teams actually do community service. Our teams were out there at Keller Williams because Keller Williams is actually helping us out for our summer camp to raise money for our summer camp. And when I say our summer camp, I mean for the residents that you call. I say our families of the housing authority. That's exclusive. That's exclusive for Hoboken housing authority families only. Want to make that clear. So I hope I can get some backing maybe from Vanessa, from whoever. Andrew has been backing us up. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, you know, uh, Mr. Recco. Thank you, you know, for those that actually participate. Thank you, Barbara, for actually helping. Barbara helped with the, the, the boots on the strap. She knows my passion. She sees us. So I'm just saying, please, why don't you start backing an organization that's actually helping your families? Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. And um, do we have our prior speakers that were having some trouble getting on? Do we have them on? Um, yes, we found Mr. Greenberg. All right, so Mr. Greenberg, you have the floor. You might be muted. What's his first name? Gary. We're, we're showing that I'm showing that he's muted on my screen. Okay, so Mr. Greenberg, you need to unmute yourself. Angel, can you unmute him or? No, I'm asking okay. him to unmute. Um, okay. No, you can only ask that they unmute. I know that from students, Lourdes. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> Maybe it's something he needs to dial on his phone and he doesn't know exactly what it is. Maybe the microphone with the line. Possibly. All right. Do we want Mr. Fitzpatrick, have you made a determination on those emails? And we'll give Mr. Greenberg a few moments. Can't hear You're you. muted. Sorry, Mr. Chair. Uh, no it appears to me, I believe there are four in question. Uh, all to appear to be timely. And uh, while there are some personal details, uh, my um, opinion is that they're all legally appropriate. Uh, they are personal details of the individuals making the comments. There's no indication that these are not intended um, for public portion. So my advice is that the okay. four should be read into the record. I okay. will point out that one of the four um, is considerably longer than the others. And under the law, there is a five minute time limit on that as well. I'm not sure that will be an issue, but um, if it goes significantly longer, then we um, should limit that individual to five minutes. When we hired Mr. Merchant, did we tell him he was like, going to have to do five minute presentations on the fly? <laughs> All right. Uh, so, so, so the, does the time count, uh, Matt, for each one? So, I, as I start each one, each one has its own clock, or is it for right. the for for right. individuals? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, here goes the first one. Is that the longest one? I, I would suggest uh, the longest one. Yeah, this is the longest uh, one. I believe. Excuse and, me. And I, I would say the name of the individual uh, who sent the email. At the beginning, yes. Frank. Excuse me. Is there any way we could take a break before? I mean, I mean, I know we've been we've been going for almost two hours. Um, 
we've never done that before. Oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, Tara, does it does it help you that this is does it help you that this is an email? Because I yeah. know for your yeah. purposes to, to document it, if I forwarded you the email, it's like you me reading it and you typing it. I just I still have to type it in. It's okay. Go gotcha. ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, so the first our first email comes from Miss Jessica Rivera. She says, Hi, my name is Jessica Rivera. I have been living at the HHA for 32 years. I am now head of household and I and I for my own apartment. I am currently residing in a temporary unit, which is at 415 Marshall Drive. My permanent unit was destroyed in the kitchen area during COVID and I had to be temporarily replaced immediately. I am a single mom of two and I was transferred into another unit, which had the same problems from my previous unit, mold. I was then transferred to a temporary unit here at 415 Marshall Drive, and I was faced with other issues like bed bugs for months and months and housing that had to come spray my temporary unit six or to seven months because the building and neighbors were also infested. I begged housing to move me again and nothing. I then got to speak to the director, Mark Reckel, which I have every, every conversation and email available. We came to the conclusion that instead of moving me back to the unit, which was messed up, to move me to a unit that held three bedrooms, I was residing in a three-bedroom apartment. Because of the ages of my two children, the director agreed. Mr. Reckel then emailed me a contract stating that I had to wait a few months, which would, would have been in February of 2021, for elevators to be fixed. Then I can be placed somewhere, and I agreed to do that, too. So many buildings that don't have elevators had vacant apartments. The director also refused to place me in. Here is where, here is where I am in May of 2021, and I'm still in my temporary unit waiting to be placed somewhere. My kids and I are living in Harbourly because most of my belongings are still at 540 Marshall Drive. I had to move out of my permanent apartment at 540 Marshall Drive as fast as I can. Not only was the kitchen falling, but it was mold and the kitchen sink flooded my apartment every single day because of plumbing problems also in the building. Also, the director had contractors come into my home during the pandemic and fix my wall in the kitchen with myself and two children living there. Both have asthma problems and the housing is was aware, housing was aware of. I finally got placed in a temporary unit and then faced bed bug problems. Most of my important belongings stood at 540 Marshall. Once I realized how infested this apartment was with bed bugs, I contacted housing, explaining that I cannot move all my things over here to get them infested too. So they agreed that I can keep most of my belongings in the 540 Marshall Drive unit. I was permanently moved into the three bedroom apartment. After six to seven months of bed bug issues was finally resolved, I then um contacted housing to see if I can get into my unit at 540 Marshall Drive to retrieve, to retrieve my things that I left there. I had two keys to the apartment. I tried to go in the apartment myself to see if I can get the, the and gather some of the things and notice the locks were completely changed without even notifying me. My address is still with the apartment 540 Marshall Drive apartment 3D. I pay rent at 540 Marshall Drive apartment 3D, not to the address that I'm currently at. The apartment is technically still mine. I was not notified of locks changing because the director and site manager at the time, Jaron, allowed me to keep my belongings there. Finally, a few months after arguing with our new director, uh, site director Maria, I was finally let in my original apartment with my belongings at 540 Marshall Drive, and I was escort escorted by the housing worker and my site director my Maria. Upon entering the apartment, I noticed things to be out of place. Nothing was the way that I left it, my apartment from when I was the last inside. I also took pictures of the very last time I was in my apartment and compared them to when I was finally let back in and nothing was the same. I went to check my living room closet to see if there were things that I noticed my stereo system was completely gone. The box to the system was still left in my apartment, but my stereo was gone. I noticed the director, I notified the director again right away and the housing worker in, in my apartment did also. The director asked if I believe it was a worker who took my belongings and I stated that how that how can it not be when they were the only people with access to my apartment? I had no idea my door lock was changed and, and I was never ever told it was. The director then asked me to write a statement about what happened and I did. He asked for pictures and receipts of the stereo and I sent that also. I then reached out to a person named Andrew Impostato for help because I was told he helps with HHA could you issues. Just slow down it, just a, could you just slow down just a little bit? You're flying there. <laughs> sure, no problem. I then, re I then reached out to... I then, let me see, 
uh, yes, I, I then reached out to a person named Andrew Impistato for help because I was told he helps with HHA issues. We spoke once and I never heard back from him also. I emailed both Andrew and the director multiple times. I called them and texted them both multiple times and nothing. HHA workers have a history of taking people's belongings out of their unit when they have to enter. My question is why am I not getting any help from something stolen from my own apartment? Why is nobody helping me when I pay rent faithfully every month? I paid money for my stereo and I'm very upset that someone would go into my unit and take it. All my other belongings are there except my stereo. I was told if I have any issues with the HHA to send an email through here. My contact info is, and then she gives uh, her. Uh, right, yes. Yeah, I wouldn't read the phone. Number. Right, right. Um, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you. Sincerely, Jessica Rivera. That is the end of one, uh, Chairman Mello. Wait, I mean, I, I let a few seconds over. You were pretty okay. good, uh, Mr. Merchant. That's because our right. we need you to slow down. I, I appreciate you were keeping the pace perfectly. All right. No problem. Go on to the next one, please. This one's a short one. Um, it comes from Melody Ferguson. I've been waiting for my deposit back from the housing. I moved out in December. I've been getting the runaround about it. I spoke to someone in the office and was told the board had to approve it. Then I was told the board had signed it and someone was on vacation. I just want to know what is the holdup, what the holdup is. That's the end of it. Thanks. Again, Melody Ferguson. All right, and the next one, please. The next one comes from Laura Madero. Hello, my name is Laura Madero, a resident at the 522 Jackson Street. I currently live in a two-bedroom apartment with three kids and myself. I have been living there for 10 years. I have a 14-year-old boy, an eight-year-old girl daughter sharing a room and myself, and my one-year-old in the other room. As a parent, I feel my daughter should not be in the same room as my 14-year-old boy who is in the peak of puberty. I was told that in order to be, to be overcrowded in my apartment of two bedrooms, that there would, will need to be seven people living there. Now, Frank, who has been very nice and did as much as he could, told me it would be a long time granted. There, would, there were issues in the apartment here. One door was falling apart a fire detector that was broken and was told that the person would return after lunch while Jaron was a manager, which the day that I have no detector within the pictures were taken. There are some pictures attached that, that uh, I will be able to forward to. Um, leaking radiator that has been issued for years and I was told they would return the next day to fix it and I still have no one here to fix it. Granted, it is summertime, but when the winter comes, this will be another issue. And another issue is that I have not signed a lease for 2020, and here we are in 2021. I never complain, and I've been a resident for 10 years on my own. When living with my family, we lived in a three-bedroom, which they still, which they are still there with an unoccupied room, a room someone like me and possible others can, I believe, uh, she would say use at the end. But that's the end of the, the email. Right there. there are some pictures. Um, it is a picture of a of a window that appears to have some something that looks like mold on it, a broken doorknob, and then um, mold against the ceiling again by the window. So I want to see if, if these pictures are current. I will make sure that tomorrow we we go into a, a physical inspection of this and you know make sure maintenance can get on this. But that's the end of that one. Excellent. All right. Good. Um, are there any? And further? the final one. The final one comes from Kathy Feeney. She says, Dear Hoboken Housing Authority, I am 66, a widow, a Hoboken resident, and a former newspaper reporter who earned a BA in journalism. I cannot crack your code for the Hoboken Housing Authority. Is there a person who can navigate me through your system? Thank you, Kathy. Yes. And I believe that is all for. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Merchant. Well done. Well done. All right. And, and thank you for... Um, pointing out that you will follow up on those issues that you can follow up on immediately. All right, is that it for the public? Oh, no, no, Mr. has Mr. Greenberg figured out how to? I don't think we've solved his online issue here, but he has, he has called me. And wait, no, wait, I think I think we just heard him say he's on. Yeah, he, he's called me and asked me if I could hold my phone up. Um, can Gary talk and see if they can hear you? Uh, Mr. Director, why don't we just have the gentleman call in directly? 
Well, he already has, and he can't seem to be heard. We can see his on, He called in on the phone? Yes. Yes. Hmm. Okay. We can't I seem to be heard. No problem with it as long as, it, as long as it's audible. So, Gary, say something. See if we can make an hearing. Hey. Hello, everybody. How are you? Thank you so much. If you can make take a few minutes, give a few uh, extra minutes to give me a chance to talk. Thank you. Hello. You're welcome. Thank you. We can hear you. You can. Okay. Yeah. So, I, I would like to introduce myself. Um, I'm not new to housing, but I'm Gary Greenberg, and I'm the executive director of the Boys and Girls Clubs of Hudson County, in which I've been running the Hoboken Boys and Girls Club on 2nd and Jefferson since it opened in 1984, and, and now serving the second generation of public housing kids, as you all know. So I had one of the worst days today in my 46-year career because I have been receiving funding through the Hudson County and the, from the, the county executive and, and from the county of Hudson for to run basketball leagues in three locations in Hudson County, two in Jersey City, and at the Hoboken Housing Basketball Court, in which I ran it last summer and we ran it the summer before. The problem, which is, not, which is completely unbelievable to everybody, is the fact that today, uh, Councilwoman Vanessa Falco spoke at the meeting and said that the agreement between uh, the basketball people, which is Andrew and myself, was never fulfilled. So let me go back two years. Two years ago, when we were get, when we were first appeared on that on your courts and played, he was in opposition. He wanted it to just be one basketball program under him. But I had my relationships, I had the program, I got the funding, and I wanted to, and I served with all of your kids anyway. So, um, so what ended up happening is that he, he, and has gone to the funding source, to my funding source, after I was granted the the permission to do it and permission from housing to be there that he went on behind my back and around me to try to pull the funding for me for himself. The second year of the program, which was last year, which was the pandemic, we had another meeting and the meeting and the deal was that I made with him so that he can have his program and I can have mine is that we would run the program for the grammar school kids for kindergarten through eighth grade, and he would do all the high school kids. He would do the freshmen all the way on up into young adults and adults if he wanted to. So we, the Boys and Girls Club, as you know, we get a lot of the kids after school. We have open gyms. We get a lot of the teens. You know we get a million kids there. So we didn't do anything with the teens, and we fulfilled our commitment. And Marquis and Hanbury and everybody that works for me and so on and so forth, they sent, we, we didn't serve those kids. Even though they were there and would have played, we didn't. In return, in the last two years, he didn't send us a single child. Now, last summer, if you remember, we had the league online, millions of people, a hundred, this was during COVID, in, in one week, a hundred people signed up, 95 of them happened to be from Hoboken, couple others from Jersey City, North Bergen, whatever, chose to go there. So the point of it is, is that we ran the league. It was highly successful. And what Andrew has done is under the guise of, it's not a Hoboken summer league. There's now a Hoboken. What he did is he then counted me and created a Hoboken summer league that it's the name of the, when you, go online and register, it's not with the city, it's with Grit and Grind. And Grit and Grind is Andrew's program. What he did is he applied for every single basketball facility in the city, including the Hoboken courts that I had for the two years and just pulled the rug out from under me. And I think that that's a grave conflict of interest. I think it's a lousy 
easy thing to do. And I want to end, end on this note. In the middle of all of this, when we were running our day camp at the Boys and Girls Club on 2nd Street, we were had on our, on our outdoor basketball court, we had Dominic uh, Bellafame, who you know from Hoboken, was running basketball drills and clinics and so on and so forth for the kids in the morning. Andrew was running one two blocks away behind the multi. He was charging a fee. I out of respect, I do have to ask you to wrap out. Of respect for the fact that he was using this, I guess, possibly as income, I canceled okay. my program and didn't run it. Mr. Greenberg, with all due respect, I do have to ask you to wrap up. All right. So what I am saying is the fact that you've been given, you know, tremendous misinformation, and it's 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 I I you know I can't tell you how crushed everybody is okay. because the thing that we did last summer right. was the greatest thing of all time, and that there's no I, reason. I do, have to, I do have to ask you to wrap up, Mr. Greenberg, I and mean, we we've I've, I think so. You've, if anybody would like to ask me any questions or anything, but we, we, I, we, I, do have a, we do have a policy of not going back and forth, even um, with somebody that we've had a relationship with. But um, you know, we, we have we have all heard you. It's a matter of public record, and um, so hello, uh, hello. Yeah, I, I do have to. I do have to. Your your time has expired, though, Mr. Greenberg. And um, but how do I? What is what is my next? What's what? What is my course of action? How do I? I, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will assure you that we will have further discussions about this through the committee process. Okay, it will, this will your your words will not go unlisted to, and we will we will. I mean, this is this is delicate, so I'm not going to think about the map. We will certainly we will certainly not drop it. Okay. I I, I would you know cut my heart out to, to, to tell I, you how I, I'm Mr. Mr. Greenberg. I do your your time has expired though. I have to be consistent, please. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, uh, that's it, I believe. Yeah. Yes, yes. All right, so. God, that session just took me back to my council days. I was about to say motion to close the public portion, but we don't do that in our meetings. I'm having a regression here. All right. Um, so the reports of committees, uh, I believe pretty much those were summed up in the executive director's report. Uh, are there any committee meetings that need to report that I'm not aware of? I don't think so, Chairman. Okay. Um, so we have no unfinished business this evening, I believe, correct? All right, so on to the resolutions. Um, resolution number 2021-05.01, a resolution to approve the minutes for the April 8th, 2021 monthly board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Do I have a second? Second. All right, any questions or concerns? All right. So I can have a, a vote, please. Am Pistato? Yes. A. Lewitt? Yes. D. E. Mello? Yes. The rest. Barbara, you're on mute. Muted, Barbara, can you help? I'm sorry, yes. Jay Sanford? Abstain. E. Seitzman? Yes. Omega. Yes. Did you, did you call my name, Director? Didn't I? Steve Mello? Yes. <laughs> That's about as long as public portion we've had in a while, so we're all working out the kinks. Okay. Um, next is resolution number 2021-05.02. Resolution, a resolution authorizing the payment of the monthly list of bills for the Hoboken Housing Authority. Do I have a motion? Motion. Do I have a second? Second. All right, any questions or comment? I have a question, Chairman. Yes. 
Commissioner, floor is um, At the bottom, it says COVID-19 expenses, 41868 I'm sorry, I haven't seen these bills and I don't know how long now. So like, I want to know what that consists of. Is that like what expenses? What what is that? Is that it? Yeah. So on the uh, on the all the way right hand column, there's two line items uh, where I have asterisked. Uh, the first one is monthly administrative expenses. It's the Zoom, the platform that we're using right now. It has an asterisk, and then under monthly contractual expenses. It is cleaning and disinfecting services. Uh, this is a contract that we went out to bid on and they basically went through all of the amps and did a cleaning and disinfecting. So if you summed up that $245 plus the 41,623, you would get to that total. So why don't, why don't you, uh, Emil, if you wanted for the commissioners that are new or, or rejoined, do you want to just go over what uh, COVID money was given to us and how those expenses relate to that? I think that might be useful for uh, Barbara and James. Maybe not James. Oh, James. Yeah, James too. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, I'll, so I'll, do it. I'll do it if you want. So we were given, we were given money from uh, the, the government. We were given money from HUD. I believe, right? And we were given 1 million, correct my numbers, but we were, we were given a certain amount of money. And that is money that was given to us that we don't have to pay back for COVID related expenses. So I had asked if on the list of bills, if they can identify those COVID related expenses with an asterisk and just keep us updated on what we've spent. Uh, we are over there. There was a um, exhibit that was on that Mark sent out showing exactly what our budget was. Uh, we, we are over the amount that the government gave us. Um, so we, we are over it. Uh, just, I, if Emma, you want to tell her, tell everyone the exact numbers. Sure, as part of the, uh, the executive director's report, I believe that one of the exhibits was uh, called a COVID-19 summary. It indicates that the authority uh, was provided one million one hundred and eighteen thousand dollars, and I had broken it out by various categories, and then the total expenditures incurred to date uh, are is nine hundred and twenty two thousand seven hundred and forty nine dollars. So there is a a balance of those COVID monies of approximately $195,000. So this, that line item um, is basically what we incurred uh, this month of that 41,868.13. I, I uh, Barbara, are you, are you done? Yes. Does that help you, Barbara? Yes. I, I have okay. Yeah. I have a question. Um, Commissioner Impostata, floor is yours. Thank you, Chairman. Um, the where is it? Uh, Lucerto Brothers lunch meeting with Torty Gallus, April 2021, $155.99. Can you give me the uh, the attendees for that lunch? Uh, I, I have to look back at the exact, but as we talked with Torty earlier, they brought their team down. And, and my staff was there that was along with the walkthrough. We had a working lunch meeting uh, with the representatives from maintenance and management to go over some issues and questions they had. Uh, so there are some folks that joined us that didn't do the walkthrough from staff. Um, uh, our maintenance supervisor, maintenance manager, um, um, I, I don't, I don't, there was a number of management folks there too. I know I could look back and give you an exact list, but, uh, but and there, then, is there a reason yeah. why, um, is there a reason why we paid for it? Well, this I, I know we're, I know we're hosting them, but you know, they, they are making money. They are in a better financial situation than we are for sure. Uh, I know again, it's $155 and I'm going to nickel and dime, 
but you know, uh, residents that are listening are going, why are we taking money and spending it on a lunch for a company that makes millions of dollars a year? Uh, they could have easily picked up the bill. Uh, again, it's, it's a perception thing. It's uh, optics. Um, yeah, and, there, and there's know. also optics with the consultant buying us food. Um, so there's optics with people giving us presents and buying us food. And, and we try to stay away from that type of conflict of interest on a regular basis, paying them dollars and they're buying us lunch. Um, we don't go to lunch with contractors and have them buy us things. And, and so there's kind of a perception on both sides, if you will, because we wanna stay honest and above board during the whole process. So we couldn't just, everyone just couldn't pay for themselves? May well have been able to, but um, you know we're, we were in a working session. We worked very hard that day. Um, um, we, we were on our feet. Uh, we went back to a community room so we could socially distance at a at a very long distance. And uh, we had a the, the eating was quick. We probably spent 15, 20 minutes eating. Uh, we had one order, so it was there when we got there. It just didn't make sense for us all to leave and go away and get our own things and come back. Um, that's just not the way that works very well. Got it. All right. The, uh, Go for that. the next one is uh, the Slade Elevator Industries, elevator maintenance and repair charges. At some point, we're going to end these charges. Is that, is that the plan? Or are we just every month going to keep getting elevator charges, even though we have spent, you know, uh, half a million dollars on, on elevator fixes? I don't, I don't think elevator charges will ever totally go away. They, they um, will. Yeah, I mean, the issue is always to reduce those charges. These are machines. Um, and all of our elevators are not brand new. Um, you know, the new elevators we have, we won't have maintenance charges on uh, for at least a year, but we still have a number of elevators and we have a responsibility to keep them maintained. Absolutely. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's commissioner, it's, it's, you know, I'm now on the board of my building and I've lived in my building for about 15 years. We have four elevators. You, you want there to always be elevator charges because if not, it's like owning, owning an automobile that you never bring in for a service, even an oil change. I mean, it's just, it's way too complicated of a piece of equipment to not continually service. Mm -hmm. so you don't just let it run without service. Right. That's irresponsible. Is there, is there, uh, can Emil, can you give up, can you give us a report on the next meeting or send it out uh, next week on elevator charges in 2019, 20, and so far, 21. Is that too much of an ask? Or... Uh, yeah, sure. So it would be a, uh, a supplemental schedule that uh, what I would do is I would um, have to export the, the general ledger into a spreadsheet. I, I probably wouldn't include it in this list of bills, if that's OK. Yeah, no, no, no. Just, just get, yeah, just like a separate report. So we have a baseline of what we spent in 2019, 2020. So then we could start seeing that, you know, we, we were told that this is going to so definitely by, by doing this elevator project, the, the cost analysis was that we do it now and then we start saving money each year. And that money that we're saving can go to other capital improvements. So we're not bleeding from the elevators every year where that number goes significantly down and that we have extra money for, you know, other capital improvements, fixing up units, whatever the case may be. Um, so I would like to see 2019, 2020, and now we start to get a baseline of what those costs were and what the costs are going moving forward. So we can put this to work. Um, that would be appreciated if that's, if that's not too much to ask. Uh, yeah, I could work on that. Um, I would I would actually suggest that if we're going to do that, go back further because to just go back to 2019 is not, it's not going to give yeah. us a picture in my estimation. Yeah, I agree. So if we could do maybe a five, I mean, it's just a spreadsheet, right? You're just dragging in the, the cost. Uh, you, you, you filter out T Slade or Slade operations and uh, it should, shouldn't should be too much of an ask. So. Right. So I'm thank you. That's it. Thanks. Appreciate okay. your time. Great. Anybody else have any questions or comments?
Right. Call the vote, please. And Pistato. No. A. Lewitt. He's on mute. I'm muted, Aaron. You're on mute, Commissioner. You're on mute. Well, I walked away and I'm not sure what we're doing. Well, we're approving the list of bills, Commissioner. Oh, fine. Yes. D. Mello. Yes. D. Reyes. Yes. J. Sanford. Yes. D. E. Seitzman. Yes. L. Vega. Yes. All right, resolution number 2021-05.03, a resolution designating signatories with respect to PNC Bank. I'll make the motion. Do I have a second? Second. All right, any questions or comments? Call the vote, please. And for Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, if I can interrupt very quickly, just to be clear, yes. this is similar to the uh, resolution in the reorganization meeting. The blanks here would be filled in with the names of the uh, newly reelected chair, uh, Chair Mello, and Vice Chair, uh, sure. Vice Chair Seitzman. Yep, just a housekeeping resolution. All right, uh, call the vote, please. Dan Pisato? Yes. A. Lewitt? Yes. D. Mello? Yes. D. Reyes? Yes. D. Sanford? Yes. Seitzman? Yes. El Vega? Yes. Our resolution 2021-05.04, resolution designating signatories with respect to Provident Bank. I'll make the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any questions or comments? The same comment applies here, Mr. Chair. The names would be filled in with the names of the chair and vice chair. Certainly. All right. If I could have a vote, please. Ann Pistato. Yes. You will it. Yes. E. Mello. Yes. E. Reyes. Yes. J. Sanford. Yes. E. Seitzman. Yes. El Vega. Yes. All right, resolution number 2021-05.05, resolution to increase the amount of the contract for general construction services. Do I have a motion? Motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a question. Yes, Commissioner Reyes, your question. It says that we want to increase their contract for unforeseen work. Do we know what that unforeseen work was? Yes, yes we do. And uh, Emily, you want to drill down on that a bit? Um, this contractor has been on site uh, supplementing our existing maintenance staff in apartment repairs um they worked on a number of projects um this month their their pay list was approved for a total of um Gokson is at $35,000, um, but the exact additional work, um, I would have to dig into that a little bit, Commissioner Reyes, as far as what that construes. Um, it, these are tasks that our, our maintenance manager has uh, Mass provided. Who is the maintenance manager? I'm sorry. Jackie Medina. Okay. And now my confusion comes in. We have a local on site fixing apartments. This company is on site supplementing our maintenance department. Why are we not hiring additional? Well, it's, 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 there's a, a, a maintenance approach that when we hire more people, we have very high overhead costs. And, and one of the great approaches that we have for when we run into an issue where we may have a large leak and five apartments are damaged and, and we need people there now to deal with those issues, we can have a contractor at our beck and call that can mobilize. They come and do the work and we don't have to pay those guys forever. 
Uh, they bring professionals in, they do the work, and then they're gone until the next time we need them. So we use them for special projects. We use them when we have an immediate need for a large issue. Um, we do um, cost out their work. We inspect their work afterwards. Um, we'd actually, I would actually like over time to expand their, um, their working with us. Um, we have very, very high overhead costs and legacy costs and uh, a maintenance model of bringing in an outside contractor is very, very cost effective. Um, when you see the amount we must pay a maintenance guy with their, uh, with their benefits, their retirement amounts, um, the direction of bringing in outside contractors um, is widely used in property management. And this is our, um, our focus in that direction. And they've been very, very effective and efficient for us when we've had large projects that were just beyond the capability of our in-house staff. Yeah, it's a, it's a very common approach, both in PHAs and just in, in large buildings in general. To have, to have a limited, limited amount of staff and then you, you outside contract for additional workflows when it, when it bulges up into more activity. I'm not against it. My concern is only that they were given a certain amount and now we're over it. So now we're paying more money and I just, yeah. and really, honestly, like things like this, we should have available for the commissioners, to be honest with you. If, if you're saying in a, in a resolution, there's unforeseen, um, expenses i mean i think we should be notified what the expenses were i mean it's only um and i do think we should have had jackie on this call because she manages these projects and the way we go into this project is we approve a certain amount for them for the year and then we assign them task orders and in one year they may be under one year we may get them to the top and we have to go a little over mm -hmm. And we're foreseeing that we want to give them some work here toward the end of their contract that'll go a little bit over the contract. What what is the what, where is it, who is our um so our maintenance supervisor or director of maintenance? We 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 have a fill in is is Jackie right? Yeah, we're we're spreading that work out between Jackie and a maintenance supervisor named Sammy who handles the on site on site workers. And do you, do you have a plan to hire a full-time director? Yes, we've been doing some interviews very recently. Okay. And uh, this, this dollar amount that we're increasing it, what is the dollar amount? $24,018.58. And, and to Barbara's question, you, you're not prepared to tell us what projects that $24,000 is going to go to? So it's a, it's a, it's a combination. So uh, this month we incurred $35,485 to them. So previously we were under their contract value, but now we've exceeded it by $24,000. So essentially uh, of that 35,000, you know, 20, 24,000 of that, is an excess. I could give you a breakup. Um, they were in uh, five different apartments, varying from 221 Jackson to another apartment in 221 Jackson. Uh, There's a, a third in 221 Jackson. Uh, 220 Adams, they were in and they were in 455 Ninth Street, uh, Christopher Columbus. So basically they were in three different properties and that comprised what we incurred to them this month of that $35,000. When they go into those apartments, again, is that for leaks? Is that, are they fixing walls? What are they doing? And I get it, they're in five different yeah. apartments, but what are you fixing in those apartments? And I understand your question, and I don't think we've been asked this on, on previous times. We've had an issue like this. And I, I can be prepared next month to bring you a full breakout of what they've done. Uh, we did not ask Jackie with a full breakout to attend this meeting, but we can certainly supply that with to you. So can we- I can, can, I can help a little bit, uh, if, if you like, uh, Right. Commissioners, um, those apartments were apartments that were empty, and they she put a crew in 221 to make all the units that were empty ready. 
So those now that the, all the empty units at 221 are ready to lease as soon as that waiting list opens or, you know, we're doing transfers in the meantime, but they were redoing apartments. So they would go into an apartment and just do it completely. And then they would so move to the next using, apartment. So we're using them. Okay. This is confusing now. So yes. we're using them and the local to fix apartments. Am I right or wrong? Because I mean, because that's what it seems to like, like to me. Because we're moving we apartments and fixing them as fast as we possibly can. Um, it's a priority for us um, to, to get in and use every resource we have to get these apartments ready. Um, as you were saying, it's been a priority and it remains a priority. So we're going to use every resource we have. And if we have a resource like these guys and we can find a few apartments that they're not doing anything, we can get them into, turn them quickly. That's the direction we're going. I just, so we, and we, have 70, we have 72 available vacant units, though, that are ready to go right now. Right? No, no, no. 20, 27. 27. You you said earlier, you know, 27, there's 114 yes. that were vacant. Yes. 42 of them were, were deemed inhabitable. So well, 72 those, were left. No, those 42, those, no. So those 114 are vacant. 42 are offline so that we don't get penalized, but are now, the entire 42 are with a contract. Um, they are working on them. They started the first phase. Um, they they are now in demolition. That. Yeah. So that's the forty two. So what, what then, about the seventy two? The seventy two out of those seventy two, there are twenty seven that are ready to lease up, and the okay, rest so are. Why don't we? Why don't we just? Why don't? Why is it a priority to go over the contract? Why don't we lease the seven, the twenty seven, get that squared away since that's a priority. Get people in those units. And then slowly we could start to get more units down, but we shouldn't be increasing and going over contracts when we have 27 units that are ready to be filled. And Frank, the reason you haven't occupied those 27 units is, is you're finding the right people to go into those units. Correct. We did send letters to everybody on our one and zero. Um, and unfortunately the people are not returning uh, calls to that and we've gotten to the point where we've exhausted uh, so we are in essence purging our zero and one list and now that's the, why the need for that um, waiting list to open so we're, we're we're having trouble finding people for our vacant units yes I, I, I'm, I'm, this, blow, this is blowing my mind commissioner we, we have, have hundreds have of people, people waiting on a people. list we mandated process we can't just we can't just jump around a line. I mean, otherwise we'll get we'll get sued. I, you know, I get it. We'll get in trouble with that. Line, you know, we, we don't we don't just dole these out on a you know. It just it's not how that works. Contact someone. You're right. There's a process. We contact them. We don't get a call from them. How many times and how many different ways have do we attempt to contact them and then take them off the list if they don't return the call? <laughs> They get two, uh, so they get two letters. So they get a letter, they get the second letter. We do have to give them time because of the mail. So the first letter, we have to give them 30 days and then we send the second notice. And then with the second notice, they get a final 30 days by which then we remove them and purge the file. And then we have to keep that for five years to, to show in case anybody wants to see that. So it's 60 days in total that they get before they get taken off. And how long have these vacant apartments we've been contacting individuals for? Well, these 27 are just recent 27 apartments that have been finalized by the maintenance crew. So it, it hasn't always been that 27 are ready to go. Those That new push, that new incentive is by the director to say, um, we want to be able to get all these units ready so that as soon as the list opens up, we can just fill it. Our goal is to get to 100% occupancy, hopefully within the six months, um, with fresh people on the list, as as people wait on lists for a long time, unfortunately, what happens is some people either find something else somewhere else, or they move, or or you know, unfortunately, maybe their situation got worse, and now they're not receiving mail where they were. Maybe now they're in a worse situation. Maybe now they're homeless and they can't get the mail. So that is um, unfortunately the the hard part of when lists are old, when someone has been on a list for a long time, and but that is a, a sad reality of it. We're, we're supposed to be doing a yearly recertification. Is that correct? That's for existing tenants, correct. And how about uh, I, on the wait list? Isn't there a process where you're supposed to update their information 
every so often really? send them something if they don't return it back then they're we kind of know that they're not in the same situation yes so with the paper reduction act they did uh, kind of say that they would prefer you know it's not mandatory that every year someone gets you know that letter sent out i don't know when the la very last time that it was purged but i can certainly take a look and give you that information yeah, we, we need to do a better job, I think, of, of number one, that we have to do a better job of recertification so that when things come up like this, these people are not like they're not dead. Right. They're not on the list. And five years ago, they passed away and we have no idea. So we're wasting time. And as we're wasting time, a resident who's in a unit, a, a broken down unit could be potentially moved into a new one. Um, the, the next point is. We, we had, you know, hundreds of units that were taking, that were vacant for our elevator relocation. So I, I just, I'm very confused that that process is now ending. You were very clear, Director Echo, that you had to keep those units vacant. And I understand that. It was part of the law and, and part of the uh, Relocation Act. So this, this idea that we're just getting 27 units back online I, I don't, I don't trust. I don't, I don't think that's, that's accurate. Uh, and for the residents that are listening, they're, they're, they're begging us to get this process moving along. They've been begging us for years and we need to start, we need to start filling these vacant units as soon as ne next week, if, if that's possible. We agree. And we're doing everything humanly possible to fill those units. We had to make that sacrifice in order to do our elevators. And we're out there working with every tool we have to get these units ready. And as soon as our new software is in place, which we expect to be July to open up that waiting list and have new people in that waiting list, I think it surprised all of us that we went through the zero and one bedroom waiting list so quickly. And we are moving, we are moving quickly. Uh, we're moving as quickly as humanly possible. Is it possible to, um, to push this off, this vote? to the next meeting when we can get a report from Jackie onto what these these costs, these extensions of costs are are, uh, are adding up to? I wouldn't think there, that there'd be an issue with that. I think uh, the, the contractor may be a little late in payment, but other than that, I think we can push it off till next month. Okay, so I'll make a motion to table this until the date certain of the next meeting. Do I have a second? Second, second. All right, if we could uh, have the vote, please. And Yes. A. Lewitt? No. B. Mello? Yes. B. Reyes? Yes. A. Sanford? James, uh, are you there? I think you're muted, James. We're seeing him, we just can't hear him. <laughs> <clears throat> he's still, he's still muted. Uh, just for clarification, um, we are tabling the the motion uh, to increase the contract value. However, what the costs that were incurred to the contractor this month would still be paid out. Right. Is that accurate? We're still, we're still under our, our no. yearly allowance, right? No. <clears throat> if, we, if we make that current payment, we would be in excess by twenty-four thousand uh, dollars. My understanding was that the uh, the list of bills were approved, and that payment was included in the. Oh, that's that's not that's not good. Yeah, we got to. Uh... I, I believe our staff has done a good job in monitoring these contracts. And we know, um, I think once we get Jackie on and give you a clear definition of what that work was, you're going to see that we agreed to that work and have that done work well. Well, yeah, we, we got a, we got a, um, Harold, if you could chime in here, we, we have a motion and second and we have a vote. So we're already in the process. We can't go back in time. Well, I have a suggestion on actually three pieces. First of all, we're in the midst of a vote to table the resolution 0504 
five to increase the amount. And I suggest we complete that and then come back and I'll give you comments on the pay list and resolution 0506. So James is no longer with us? He's trying to get back on. I think he's hitting a technical hiccup. He's right here. There he is. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. I uh, had a technical issue. I'm, I, I was hearing everything that you were saying, uh, but I just couldn't get it unmuted. So I'm back. No worries. So what, what's your, your vote on the, the motion to uh, table this to a date certain of the next meeting? Um, <clears throat> how essential is it that we approve this tonight? Since this is my first meeting back. Did, did you, did you hear the discussion that we just had? I was trying, I, I was listening in, trying to get back. My priority was to get back online. So I think it finally came down to the ED saying that he thought that it would be appropriate to tape it. Correct me if I'm wrong. No, that's correct. I think we can do that. Yeah, he said we could. Okay. Do it. I don't know if he said it was appropriate. I think he said we could do it. Okay, right, then uh, I'll vote to table. Okay. So you're um, voting in the affirmative. He's voting yes. You say it's one? Yes. Nell Vega. Yes. Okay. To, to a date certain. Okay, so, so now let me go back to what Emil points out. That's an excellent point. Emil's point is that the resolution that we just tabled is to increase the contract amount in reflection of a payment that was already approved on the pay list. I think that if you want to follow suit with tabling the resolution, you should have consideration of going back to the pay list and removing the item in question to the extent of the excess. What did you say that was, Emil? 24 grand? Yes, that's correct. $24,000 is the excess. So we would still pay the contractor something, and I don't have that number. I'm sure you do. But we would not pay them the 24000 that was the subject of the resolution that just got tabled. We'd have to cut them a new check for a lower amount. Right. So do you have that amount by any chance, Emil? Yeah, it would essentially bring them to that total contract value of $242,784. Right. So it's... A, it's going to be an approximate eleven thousand dollar payment, as opposed to the thirty five thousand dollars that was on the list of bills. But I, I do have some concerns uh, with making that small of a payment at the current juncture. I don't know if Mr. Recker wants to weigh in, but I think that this is a um, a small contractor, and if we have projects that are uh, currently ongoing we may have some issues i don't know i'd have to speak yeah, to the yeah let me wait I, I think that any any time the housing authority um uh doesn't make a payment on time it's a problem and and i think uh we need to work in this organization for a level of trust between the commissioners and staff that that you have a trust in us um and we can demonstrate as we, i think we have clearly that we know how to run construction projects we've done them incredibly well uh, we have not had no lawsuits. We have had no um, indications of overpayment of any problem. But when we run into an issue like this, and, and for some reason the board doesn't believe that we've administered this correctly, I think it's a shame to turn to the contractor. But also the board here is saying, prove to us that this is the exact right amount. And, and I, I do think it's not a great thing to go back to our contractors and have that type of relationship with them. It will hurt us in the future. But again, I hear what the board is saying, um, that, um, that they believe that this amount is somehow wrong um, and that they want clear evidence that it's right. And, uh, and so I, I think that's what we have to do. Chairman, uh, two points, Chairman. 
test if you could make it quick, please. Yeah, sure. Um, it sounds like last month there should have been a request to change the resolution, the contract to add 25,000, not this month. Now, in, in, in me looking at this, it seems like a mismanagement thing where, you know, we have a, we have a maintenance director that potentially didn't, uh, I don't know, evaluate the cost structure, and we didn't do it last month. If we would have done it last month, we wouldn't be in this problem right now. Well, sometimes things happen during one month. And in this yeah. particular incident, this, this, this was work we needed to do during this month. And traditionally, we, we approved the list of bills before our other resolution. And if we'd have done the list of bills after the resolutions, that may well have been a different case. Um, so <clears throat> this, this small issue here is just a matter of having done the list of bills before the actual resolution. And if I may, uh, Commissioner Pistola, I may have I may have confused the the issue with me not knowing one hundred percent. I was trying to speak for Jackie. I shouldn't have spoke for Jackie. I don't want my words to affect the contractor. Um, this may very well be that these were units. I know that the one at uh, four fifty five was definitely uh, not a refurbishing apartment. They were working on someone's bathroom. There was an emergency um, that, that had to be fixed there. So it wasn't, a, a, the, the family was living in that apartment. And I know that there was another instance where there was damage inside of several apartments because of a pipe that were, that broken. So um, I just hope that me saying something to try to be helpful doesn't hurt the contract. I just want to say that part. What, what number is it on the list of bills? It, it's under contractual expenses number 10. It's on the first page, uh, right near the bottom. So, yeah, so number 10, I mean, it, it doesn't say there that part of that, you know, the description could have read, this is an increase, you know, it could have been two different line items. It could have been the 11,000 or whatever for general construction repairs. And then the next line item could have been additional construction repairs that you know that went over the the contractual amount so that we would have we would have asked the question and said well what is this for and then we would have obviously addressed it that doesn't change the fact that we now started the vote to table it so uh, we you know we got to finish the vote and, we already uh, we already did table. We already finish the vote but but okay so director given what emil's just told us uh does that are you, are you still committed to what you said that it, it shouldn't be problematic to postpone it by a month or, or, or are you now rethinking that? Well, I think with uh, Emil's comment, I think it's an issue, but I, I hate, like I said, I hate to ever hurt a contract that does good work for us. And these people do very, very good work for us. Um, yeah. Also, let me, let me interrupt for a second. If you're doing a rehab, there is no accurate scope of work. And I'm, I'm sure Ms. Vega can, Commissioner Vega can, confirm that you know you think you got to replace four tiles because they they wiggle and they seem like they're loose in the bathroom and you wind up replacing 50 tiles because once you start they all fall apart uh you know you you find from mica that that you didn't look at the first time but now you see underneath it's all swollen and it's, it's got to be changed there's so many things that come up when you're standing in the apartment for hours and hours, as opposed to doing a 10 minute walkthrough, which is what's done for a scope of work. So to expect, if, if you want an accurate price, the price would probably be increased by 50%. Uh, so on the last, job, the last job that I was involved with, we, we actually reduced the price and I think we got to rehab four more apartments or something like that. And, and, you know, and we upgraded refrigerators, we upgraded stoves, you know, things change when you're in, when you're standing in the sure. apartment week after week. All right. Uh, I a, all right. Uh, Mr. Reyes, I believe you had something to say. Yes, I get it. I, I get what Mr. Lewitt is saying that we really don't know the scope of work exactly how much and we get in there, we do find problems that are bigger than we anticipated. And that's fine, but then it's up to the authority to let this board know ahead of time to say, look, this is what we're, you know, what we've encountered or the contractor has encountered. And as a result, this is going to happen. And we may have to 
up the contract. I get it. And I get everything that you're saying, Mr. Lewitt. We got new refrigerators, but the honest truth is these residents are still going through the same thing. We have molds in the walls. We have refrigerators that don't work. We have leaks that are happening. 221 has leaks on all on, on one side. I had the RAD member tell me today on one whole side. So I get what you're saying, but I'm I, I see it and I hear it from my residents. So um, then, that's so, why I'm being here with this contract. I just, I want to know what was the excessive work that was done and unforeseen work. And that should have came with the packet if you're asking for additional money. All right, then Commissioner oh, Vega. I have a question and a comment on this topic. Um, question is, was this work already done? Yes. So why do we vote after it's done? Why can't we vote before it's actually done? I mean, it's discussed obviously with, with the team, with, Mr. with the director, um, but before he agrees to the work to be done, why like, why do we vote after the fact? If, if it truly was emergencies, and again, the thing we're missing here is, is Ms. Jackie and, and going back to Frank's comments, um, that we had to go in and fix something immediately because there was some plumbing failure, which is a vast majority of our work on our buildings, um, then we would have authorized the contractor to go ahead because the safety of the residents is number one and things happen quickly during a month. Okay. And, and again, Ms. Barbara, I'd love to know where the leak is on the whole side of 221. I'm sure if you speak with Sandra, she actually told me this afternoon when I was leaving the event, she pulled me over to the side and told me that there was a whole side where it was one wall um, going through, it was going from floor. They went and fixed the one floor where the person originally, um, I guess, complained, but it didn't fix on top of it. I'll follow up with her. All right, and then Ms. Mm -hmm. Ms. Vega, Commissioner Vega, you still uh, And my comment is of the 42 apartments that are, um, I'm sorry, of the 27 apartments that are done, you mentioned, Frank, that they were mostly zeros and uh, efficiencies and ones, right? Yes. So on the next set, can we focus on larger units for families since we already have that list? You know, already, yes. or, and there's already tenants in the building that yes. need transfers. Yes. So that is those uh, the 42 units are mostly twos, threes, and a few fours. Okay. If everyone else is finished, um, can I have the floor for a second, Mr. Chair? Yes, please. I hate to add yes. to the complication. I think we're competing for our longest ever meeting here, but I have to. There's another resolution that relates to all of this, and it has to do with extending the contract with respect to general construction. It's the next one on the agenda. Now, I need Emil's help for a second. When does the contract expire, Emil? Uh, it would have otherwise expired on July 31st. So are they going to do any work between now and the end of July? So the, uh, the next proposed resolution was to increase the contract term by one year starting May 1st. Okay, I, I wanted to make sure that's what the intention was. That's why I asked it the way it is. So the additional complication is that if we were to adopt 06, we'd start a new contract period. Now. Is that right? 06 or 07. Sorry? 06 or 07? 06. We just had 06. a special motion to to move um, 06 to the next meeting, correct? Or am I? That was 05, Mr. No, that was oh, 05. Okay, okay, okay. So again, let me get it straight, Emil. If we adopted 06, that would start a new contract period as of May 1st? Correct. 
but the current contract so, on in July. Yeah, it doesn't sorry? matter. Sorry? But sorry, was that you, Andrew? Yeah, I'm saying why if we're why are we extending it if it's not over till July? Because they've exceeded the limit. Otherwise, we're going to end up in a situation next month that's the same one now that we just tabled, which is they're going to go up against the limit. I assume they're working now, right, Emil? I believe so, yes. And so okay. Since they reached a limit, the idea was to extend their contract and start it on May 1st so we could, we could continue to utilize them. Okay, and I just wanted that all the commissioners understand that to some extent, the tabled resolution, the one we just talked about that we haven't considered yet, and the payment of the $24,000 are all related to each other. Now, depending right, upon what people... Given, then given everything that's been said, I make a motion to reconsider. To reconsider. The I second the motion. All right. Reconsider why. We have a motion and a second from the prevailing side. So if we could take a vote on reconsidering. All right. Uh, Chair, just for a second. Reconsider what? Reconsider Resolution the previous, number... previous motion. We, I want a re-vote, which I believe, if I am up to date on my Robert's Rules of Order, as long as it's a motion and a second from the prevailing side, which both... Um, myself and Commissioner Sanford were on the prevailing side and we made the motion the second that we can take the vote over again. Um, okay, I just wanted to be clarified what it is that we're reconsidering. It's 210505. No, we're-, we're... Yes. It's uh, I, I think technically- no, basically re re table um, we're, we're gonna take a vote on rescinding the tabling. And then we'll have to vote on the actual resolution. Okay, I, I just clear. want to clarify which resolution we're working on. Oh, five. And it's 0505. So I just okay, made so the, the, vote again on the table. The motion and second that you just put on the table are appropriate under Robert's rules. Yes, yeah, so now we, we, we're basically taking the vote again on whether or not to table. Okay. That's correct. All right. All right, Mr. Executive Director. Hey, I'm No. Hey, Lewis. Wait, 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 wait. But are we clear on what we're doing? I mean, please, no. some legal guidance. We're re-voting on the original resolution. We're re-voting. No, not... no, you're not. You're, you're voting on to rescind the table. No, no. I said it would effectively do that. I believe according no, to Robert's no. rules, you you, we, you, we have, you we have make voted a to motion to, to vote the last vote again. Please, I, I, it's really, it doesn't matter to me which way it's done. I just want people to be clear on how they're voting. Okay. I, I don't understand. We, we voted to table, so now something has to be done to updo that. Up, you, you have to now vote to change that you tabled it. Again, it really doesn't matter correct. to me how we do it. I just want the lawyers to tell us which way and for people to be clear on how they're voting. Right. Commissioner Impostato is correct. The motion okay. was made and seconded to consider again the motion to table. Right. So now we're if voting. Vote if we vote yes. no, saying no. So he just voted no. I do not want to table it. If you vote yes, you will be reconsidering the motion. If you vote no, the tabling stands. Okay. Fine. So yes. I vote. thought I was voting to okay, okay. That's not fine. So, upend so if we vote decision. yes, we're saying <laughs> we're, we're then going to freak out. We're going to vote three times if the, if this goes a certain <laughs> way. Hysterical. All right, that's fine. That's fine. Why so, is Jackie not on the call? So a vote of no is not to reconsider. A vote of yes is a vote to reconsider what we just did. That's correct. Right. Okay, so Commissioner Imposado has voted no. He doesn't want to reconsider. Yeah, I vote yeah. I vote yes. What? I'm not sure. 
we're, we're, <laughs> we're reconsidering the table. This is now, now essentially, are you, you voting the table in or not? Let me, let me try one more time. Oh, well, it's not if what you just said. That's what yes. I thought it was. My goodness. This is if this you is. vote yes on this resolution, it means that you will then be in a position to vote again on the underlying motion. You have undone the tabling of the previous motion. Okay. If that's you fine. vote no, the tabling stands. So, so Commissioner Impostato then just voted yes. I want to do undo the table. Well, I think everybody has to understand exactly what we're voting on. So let's just so now start I voted, from the yeah, beginning. I no, understanding it now, I voted the same way the first time. No, okay. I, I, do, I don't want to upend the tabling. All right. Okay. Um, are we back to Aaron Lewitt? Still not certain. How, how about yeah. you? How about, how about yeah, everybody say this? I'm confused. I'm still confused as anything. So I say, voted no, but now I have yes, to Yes, I yes. want to undo the tabling or no, I don't want to undo the tabling. And then, you know, at least it's clear on the record. All right. That's correct. I'm, I'm comfortable going forward. I think. Okay, so that if that's the case, then which way do you want to go forward, Aaron? Oh my God. To undo the tabling or to leave it tabled? <laughs> undo the tabling. Undo the tabling. Okay. Thank you. So that's a yes. That's a yes to pay the contractor his uh, bill. No, no, we haven't gotten there yet. I'm, I'm oh. going to make a clear decision if you can say you want to undo the tabling or I do not want to undo the table. Okay. Uh, I'm changing the language. And if somebody wants to sue me over it, sue me. Okay. So Lewitt says he wants to undo the tabling. Next. Dave Mello. I want to undo the table. Or be Reyes. No. I do not. <laughs> hey, Sanford. Yes, I want to undo the table. There you go. Yes, I want to undo the table. Al Vega. No. I do not want to undo the table. <laughs> okay, so I think the undoing of the table has prevailed. Now can we have a vote on... Uh, just to be clear, you're you're voting on something you you don't know what the money is being spent. I, I, I'm, on. I'm clear. Believe me, that's the that's the one thing I am clear on. Okay. I'm not clear on that's, anything else I, that just happened, but I am clear on that. Do you have a right. so you then, have responsibility have the vote, to understand um, what you're voting on? If we could have the vote on resolution 2021-05.05. No one clearly cares about the responsibility. Uh, okay. Um, hey, I, I think hey, we, we're, beating, we're beating a dead horse at this point. No. Hey, Lewitt. You're on mute, Aaron. <laughs> Aaron, you're on mute. Okay. Is yes my right vote? Yes. Opposite of mine, yes. Or no, whatever you want. Be mellow? <laughs> yes. Be Reyes? No. Jay Sanford? Yes. Be Seitzman? Yes. El Vega? No. Okay, so the resolution prevails. We have moved on. Okay, resolution number 2021-05.06, a resolution to extend the contract for general construction services. I'll make the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Okay. Please tell me we don't have any further comments because uh, honestly, <laughs> I think we've, we've commented ourselves to death. Are there any further comments or questions? Please call the vote. Hey, Impostato. No. Hey, Lewitt. Yes. D. Mello. Yes. D. Reyes. No. J. Sanford. Yes. D. Seitzman. Yes. L. Vega. No. So prevail the resolution passes. Resolution number 2021 dash. 05.07, a resolution to extend the contract for provision of the delivery and pickup of steel roll-on, roll-off trash containers. I will make the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any comments or questions? Let's call the vote. Am Pistato. Yes. A. Lewitt. Yes. E. Mello. Yes. E. Reyes. <coughs> yes. 
Jay Sanford. Yes. Seitzman. Yes. Al Vega. Yes. All right, and then uh, before we we have to call a vote to go into closed session tonight, correct? Uh, no, we have, have you have one more. What's the one more? Am I working off? Of the, am I working off of the? Uh, or the contract yeah. for resident service provider program. Program provider. Sorry. Yes, yes, yes. I was wondering about that. So I must be looking off of the wrong. I came later, I think. Yeah, yeah I believe Lord sent an update earlier today. Yep, let me let me pull it up. I'm sorry. I had everything pulled up at that. You can have it on my desktop though, so just give me a number. <clears throat> let me open that up. That was the one sent today. Yes, sir. Correct. Eleven thirty-nine AM this morning. Okay. Yes, revised. There we go. All right. And then last but not least, apologies for that. Last but not least, resolution number 2021.05.08, a resolution to award a contract for a resident services program provider. I will make the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second. All right. Any comments or questions? Yeah, just one. I know it's late. One comment. Um, this is for the uh, Boys and Girls Club uh, for the use of the basketball courts. Uh, there was a speaker, uh, Mr. Greenberg, that spoke. And just to give some color on what occurred today, uh, he, he claimed that I was responsible for uh, having his funding removed. Uh, I don't think I have, I'm in any position to do that. Uh, Gary and the Boys and Girls Club has given a no bid um, gr uh, money from the Hudson County freeholders of $50,000 every summer to run basketball leagues. Um, there's no, I, I, I called up, the, the freehold, the Hudson County and asked for the application to submit for that funding uh, as well as where the RFP is to submit for that funding as a Hudson County taxpayer. I think I have the right to do so. Um, and I was told that there is no such application process that for however long, three, four years, he is always given the money without anybody else part of the equation. Um, he, he is he is right that I run a I have a nonprofit foundation basketball foundation and we will be running a youth summer basketball league this summer that has over has 136 residents of Hoboken youth already registered. Um, so I don't want to get into the whole thing, but the reason why his funding was in question and tabled at the county meeting today was because of he was not able to supply the registrations or the overall, um, the overall assessment of how the program has gone the last three years. So the, the freeholders, not myself, the freeholders collectively voted to table it because they're unhappy that he has not provided a final recap report of who played in the summer league, what was the money spent on, uh, what is his plan for this summer league, and I'm guessing they agree that there needs to be a process for that, seeing that it's $50,000. So I, I take the heart that I was responsible. I think he does a fantastic job. Uh, I have worked with him. I've tried to work with him over the last three years to help out in any way we can in running that league. Uh, and to no avail, he has no interest in, in working with anybody. Um, I continue to work and, and have no problem. I would love to, to see you know, Gary sit down at a table with myself, Leo and Vanessa and come up with a collective league that benefits all residents so that we have diverse teams, that we have diverse backgrounds. Um, our league is going to be coached by firefighters and police officers. We're going to have motivational speakers come in. We have uh, NBA players that are going to come speak to the kids. So we, we have a very extensive basketball program that is going to be laid out this summer. Um, and, and that, that, that is all that's, um, um, 
And, and as for his mention of a conflict of interest, I took myself off of the resident services committee as Chairman Mello can attest to the other night when this came up, I did not want to speak about it because they were, they were deciding in that committee meeting on whether or not they were going to give him the time. So I, it, probably not a conflict, but just to be safe, I took myself off. I took myself off the call. I stepped away. I didn't want to talk about it. When I vote tonight, I'll be abstaining because I don't want any type of conflict. And um, even though I have no business, I have no relationship with his uh, on his uh, Boys and Girls Club. I have no affiliation. I have no direct. I'm not a board member. I'm not anything. So that's my uh, that's my recap of it. Um, Mr. Uh, Patrick, yes. Matthew, I have a quick question because right. I disclosed that my children do go to the program. Does that have a conflict with myself? Should I vote for it or against it? Or I just want to be clear. You pay them. Right. I, uh, I, As a resident, I mean, that, they participate. That up, that's up to you, uh, Commissioner Reyes, to determine whether you feel there's a conflict. Um, my immediate reaction is that probably does not rise to the level of a conflict if simply your children are enrolled in a program there. Correct. As residents, um, I just want to make clear as well that, again, the Boys and Girls Club does cater to the children of the Housing Authority. Um, many of the children that play on there are from the Hoboken. If not, I would say about 85% of them are. Um, last year, we did see in other children from around town start to come around, and not one child that came around was turned away. And I can assure you, because I um, I sit at every game. Like I said earlier today, Erica has sat with me at the games. Um, we have a whole mom's group over there that, that supports them. So with that being said, I just want to make sure that what I, what I don't want to see happen is that it is taken away from someone who is actually giving to our children. And then it becomes now a big city thing. And now the, the, the children from here don't get to participate like in a lot of other things. And then what happens to our children? It's bad enough we're losing them to these streets. I think it's a program that's helping our children. And I really would hope that you guys would consider continuing allowing the Boys and Girls Club to play there. And just just to make a comment on that, we're we're no, we're no, not the ones. No, sure you have we're not the ones funding them. We're we're not the ones funding them. It's the it's Hudson County Board of Freeholders. So I don't know why Gary. Like I'm pretty sure that you're gonna you're gonna support this. Yes. Uh, if I didn't have, I would be voting yes to allow him to use the court. Uh, so I, I don't. His issue is not with us. His issue is with the freeholders. Uh, okay. They clearly decided to take away. To question his funding and not us. I mean, we don't have any problems with it. All right. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say something now because you know, I mean, I, I've had a long relationship with our freeholder and I was looped in a little bit about this this afternoon and uh after the meeting. And um the, the way it was conveyed to me was just that there was some paperwork turned in late and they just basically punted to closely review the paperwork and to make sure that it has all the requirements that the paperwork required. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to vote in support of this. And if, if it comes down to it that he ends up not having funding, then, then we'll, we'll obviously have to revisit it because we're not going to sign it to a program that's not going to happen. But I'm not going to be the one who's going to undermine him being able to have the program should the funding go through as it has always. I mean, I, I, I do have to say that I, one thing I found in, uh, you know, over a decade of, of heavy public involvement in Hoboken is that sometimes Hoboken, we think we're a little, we think we're the smartest guys in the room and we, we don't do things that are being done by established organizations. Sometimes they're not that long established like city bike where we do this kind of rickety Hudson bike system instead. And sometimes there, you know, there's organizations that have existed for over a century that are doing things, have been doing them nationwide or worldwide. Boys and Girls Club was established in, I believe, before the Civil War, right before the Civil War broke out. Uh, it was it was made a national Boys and Girls Club, I believe, when uh, President Hoover was president before, right before the, the Great Depression broke out. I mean, they they've been around for a long time, and I just sometimes think at Hoboken, um, who's, we get away from very classic. 
I, I just think that happens in Hoboken a lot. But no, I, I don't see why you're talking. No one's questioning uh, them at all. I mean, uh, there's been They're given. Some, there's a no uh, bid uh, process. That's, that's the only thing that's what, it's what it's starting to seem like to me. Well, and this is Commissioner Sanford. I, I've been very quiet most of the meeting, and I was just wondering if I could speak up. Sure, certainly. Floor is yours. So yeah, I, I was I was listening through the meeting. I was listening through the public portion, and the last speaker, I guess, was Mr. Greenberg. Um, and I, what what is uh, what's the nature of uh, uh, Commissioner Impostato? What's the nature of your working relationship with this person? This person said you guys had an agreement. No, no, no. We have no agreement. No agreement. Nothing. I've okay. never worked with them. I've, we've had meetings. We've had discussions. We've had, you know, multiple discussions with other people there. I have no working establishment or agreement. I've never been paid by the uh, Boys and Girls Club to run events. I've never, uh, nothing. So why is he under the impression that you take funding away from him? Because I've questioned the I've questioned the funding mechanism at the freeholders um, board of freeholders, saying that there's a no bid there, there's no bid process, no application for that funding. And as a Hudson County taxpayer, I'm questioning why they give him fifty thousand why they give the Boys and Girls Club fifty thousand dollars a year to run an event without a without a bid process, without an application. So, so as a nonprofit. You know, as well as other nonprofits like Lewis, Lewis could apply for that money. Uh, community Lifestyles, the karate, the karate program can apply. You know, there should be an application process for those funds. That's what Wait, I. I'm, I'm, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. So, is this for nonprofits? No. Or, or. So. Like, can nonprofits apply, or can for profits apply? No, there, there's no, there's no application for it. There's no application for it. So. No. <laughs> I'm sorry, so how did, how did, Commissioner how did, Sanford. Hold on, one person at a time. How, how does your, I mean, it, it doesn't, I'm not, I'm trying to understand why this guy thinks the way he thinks. How does your organization have any bearing Cause, on? Because I now, I now, I think what you're asking is I run a for profit. I also now run a non profit. Oh. Okay. So as a non profit, that, that of this year, I was granted the 501c3 status. I now have the ability as a nonprofit to compete, I guess, with other nonprofits for, you know, RFPs. But this is, and, and grants, this is not one of them. This, there's no application process for this. So I don't know why Gary is thinking that I, I'm the responsible for taking his funding away that's a question for the freeholders okay and i don't think they're going to take it away okay i think i think we've discussed this adequately but commissioner reyes did you have something else you wanted to add yeah my my understanding of the whole thing is that it's a county grant and it's given to them because they play in different parts of the county as as he stated previously is he has not only the hoboken housing authority he also i believe has a location in Jersey City or in one part of Jersey City and then in another part where yeah. kind Correct. of is Jersey City, Union City. So okay. yep. my understanding right. of it. it was conveyed to me in the same way. Commissioner. Yeah, there's just no there's no application for that. All right. Okay. So that, that sounds like a, an issue for the board of chosen freeholders. Uh, That's I right. We need to I do think we need to vote though on whether we're going to you know approve the Boys and Girls Club according to this resolution. Uh, I would like to call the vote at this point on that. And as I said, I, I mean, I'm going to vote in the infirm affirmative, but uh, let's start class our votes. Okay. A. M. Pistato. Abstain. A. Lewitt. Uh, boy, not sure. Yes. D. Mello. Yes. D. Reyes. Yes. J. Sanford. Yes. D. E. Seitzman. Yes. L. Vega. Yes. I just want to say, guys, thank you so much because really our kids do really utilize this program. And yeah. again, it's dear to me. It's helped my children. So yeah, I've, I've had I've had all the students who have taken part in it. And it's it's it's, it's, it's one of the ways it's, it's the good traffic between municipalities as opposed to sometimes the, the not so positive traffic that we have. Between. Mr. Chair, I just want to get clarified. 
did I hear Commissioner Lewitt vote? Yes, he voted yes. Okay, I missed that part. Okay, so, my goodness. Um, uh, there's, there's no new business, I don't believe. Uh, I do, I do want to make the comment um, that, you know, I, I want to thank uh, Commissioner Foreman for his service. He, he has a heart of gold, and I know he, he cares very much about uh, the housing authority and the residents and, and the residents of all of Hoboken, particularly in the housing authority. And uh, I, I just want to thank him from the bottom of my heart for his service. I think he did a, a great job for us. Um, and we will, we will more formally uh, acknowledge his service and, 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 and maybe a, a few more former uh, uh, commissioners in the past um, at, a, at an upcoming meeting. Uh, and now with that said- um, we, 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 uh, we also have to say thank you to, to Jason for his time uh, spent. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure he did spend several months as a commissioner, which is volunteer work. And yes, absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. he spent a great, you know, he did a great job, you know, trying to stick up for the residents and very passionately, maybe sometimes too passionate for some, but uh, he still dedicated his time and energy and resources to this housing authority that were in the benefit of the residents. Which is always worthy of commendation. So yes, and thank you to Commissioner Smith for his service, which is always- Absolutely a agree with, with Andrew as a resident. Um, I must say that Mr. Smith did stand up and advocate for us and we appreciate it i'm sorry to see him go um and i hope that he just continues to advocate from that side of the table and and his passion continues to help the residents of the housing authority with the expertise absolutely well said everyone okay so with that a motion to go into closed session i will make the motion second closed session second all in favor second. aye Aye. 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 Mr. Chair, before you go forward, we, we need some more uh, yes, we need to, we need effort to. here. Yes. Um, Let's see, uh, I'm not sure what the subject of the closed session will be. The first I saw it is in the director's report this afternoon. But I have to ask a couple of questions as a result of that. Um, are we contemplating coming out of the closed session and taking action? Yes, we are. Well, then we need to do more than what you were about to do, Mr. So, Chair. Let's, let's do it. Um, sec second of all, the purpose of the closed session, I take it, is attorney-client privilege to discuss, is it existing legis uh, litigation? Yes. Okay. Um, I talked to Matthew and had him prepare a resolution, and I would suggest that we adopt that. Okay. I can read, read that into that? short. I can yep. read that into the record. So this is resolution 2021-05.09, a resolution of the Housing Authority of the City of Hoboken to enter into closed session to discuss pending or anticipated litigation and matters that fall within the attorney-client privilege. And the body of the resolution is, whereas the Housing Authority of the City of Hoboken, the authority, has determined that, pursuant to the applicable provisions of the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10-4-6 at SEC, it would be appropriate to exclude the public from a portion of this meeting. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the chair and board of commissioners of the Housing Authority of the City of Hoboken that the authority's board of commissioners shall immediately hereafter participate in a closed portion of this meeting for the purpose of discussing pending or anticipated litigation and matters that fall within the attorney client privilege with counsel. And be it further resolved that after such closed session, when and if it shall be in the best interests of the authority, and depending upon the need for continuing confidentiality of the issue or issues discussed, the authority shall make available the transcript of that portion of the meeting reflecting such session and shall make known to the public the topics discussed at such, such session, any action taken by it in closed session and any action to be taken thereafter by it in open public session. And do we need a, do we need a time on this or no? Well, let's adopt the resolution first. 
and then we'll discuss the procedure so the public can be aware of it. All right, I'll make a motion to adopt the resolution. Do I have a second? Okay. All right. Commissioner Reyes was the second. We could have a more formal vote, please. And Pistato? Yes. A. Lewitt? Yes. D. Mello? Yes. D. Reyes? Yes. A. Sanford? Yes. D. Seitzman? Yes. L. Vega? Yes. Um, Mr. Director, do we have another lawyer who is going to participate in this on behalf of the authority? Yes, we do. Uh, Attorney Sean Joyce is on the on the line with us. He's a participant. Sean, could you say hello? Hi there. Hello. All right. Counselor, can you tell me approximately how long you think the closed session will need to be? Um, I, I, I hope not longer than 15 minutes. Awesome. That that's, was my thought exactly. So 15 minutes. You have to make sure you take people, the public out of the meeting. Yes. Yeah, well, let me, let me do that, Eric. Um, it should be made clear now that we are about to go into a closed session, and we will make sure that anybody other than those who need to be continuing on this event, either through the Internet or phone, will be removed. And we have to turn off the, the Facebook other... live feed as well. Sorry? We have to turn off the Facebook live feed as yes, well. Yes, co completely. And we will continue to keep a transcript of this, so we still need the court reporter. And that means that at 5 minutes to 11, the public can check back in, but we may not be done. And we will not provide access until no earlier than 5 to 11, but it could be later. We're finished and come back into open session. Okay. And at that point, there may indeed be action taken. They can they can w wait in the waiting room of a Zoom session. Okay, great. That's, that's correct. And Angel, you got to make sure that you do that. Yes. It may uh, get a little complicated. Facebook is already gone, so I need to remove some people from the public and then close the meeting. Um, do you have any, should this meeting be re, be recorded? Yes. Session, I believe so. Yes. Um, and Matthew, if you don't want to stay on, I'll stay on. I'm fine. Thanks. Can I please go to the ladies' room? Yeah, Can that's highly five appropriate. Just we'll, to go we'll, to the we will room? now move the time from 5 to 11 to 11 to accommodate technical difficulties. Sure. I'm just going to take a quick ladies' room break. Okay. All right. See you guys in two, three minutes. Okay, and just make sure, Angel, that we got everybody off other than the people that we need. I'm removing Tatiana for mine. No, she's the court reporter, right? She's who? Terry. No, Terry's no, the No, reporter. I believe Tatiana for mate is just a member of the public. Oh, Not I didn't see that. I don't. I didn't see that. I don't. I don't mean just a member of the public. Is a member of the public rather yeah. than the court report. I do have a phone number that is two two a three a one one two four that I don't know who it is. Should I remove it? What's the area code? In? It say one two two a two. Three eight one one two four. I don't even know what two two eight is. Hmm. No idea who it is. No idea who it is. And for some reason, I, I could be mistaken, Angel, but I believe that's a member of the public as well. I have James Sanford twice. One as a member of the panelist and one as a attendee. 
Hi, it's James speaking. Uh, that's purposeful. I'm having a technical difficulty and I'm not able to connect without both connections. You need both connections, okay. Yeah. Yeah, James Sanford Angel is the commissioner. Frank Merchant, remove. Yeah, Frank can stay. Can I stay? Yep, and Emil can stay. Okay, I'm going to close the. I'm back, ready to go. Hey, thank you, Terry. Uh, Angel, what were you saying? Unlocking the meeting so nobody else can join. Okay. And are you going to make a separate recording for this meeting or have you already done that? Uh, I'm going to stop for a little second and I start again. <laughs>